Everyone, if you can hear me, just give me a few minutes. Uh, we have an influx of people all logging in at the same time. So my computer's playing a little bit of catch up. Hey, Matthew, you should be unmuted. I am. OK. Just trying to get the screen where I need it to be. All right. Is um, we need to um, unmute Zechariah, Mark. Yep, working on it. And uh, Linda and Julie. And if we could. Um, yeah, Linda's in. And if we could, um, if, I'm not sure if David's using his computer or calling in, but if we can put his name on his phone, if it is, so we know where he's at. Oh, no, David's there. And then I see Chris, but he's muted. Yeah, working on it. Just one sec. Everybody's bouncing around. Yep. Okay. Mark's muted still. David's okay. muted. Is Thank you, good? Ashley. Um, you want to do the co-host thing? Yep. There you go. Very good. Um, who am I missing here? Um, which one is, was Julie? I forget what her phone number is. Um, I had renamed her. Should pop up, but let me let me double check. Let me also, I have her number here. I think she's the 60. Yeah, she's down here, 4848. She's on her call. We need Julie, to Julie, can you hear us? I'm going to go ahead and rename you. I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm here. Yep, we yeah, can hear you. Goes. OK. Sorry, folks. Thanks for your patience. We're working on it. Yeah, we have a lot of attendees this time. It took a minute to pull everybody up. All right. Well, good. Good. OK. Um, so let's um, do a roll call to find out who's all here. Uh, so Matt's here. Chris is here. Chris. Zachariah Linda, is here. Linda's here. Julie? I'm here. All right. Um, are we missing anybody? Uh, Mark. Uh, Mark's not unmuted. Let me find him. Okay, can you hear me now? Here we go. Yes, yes sir. Can hear you. All right. So roll calls down. We're reconvening to open session. Uh, no reportable actions are um, during closed session. Um, make a motion to approve the consent calendar for the approval of the January 2021 checks and warrants and the approval of the minutes from the special meeting of January 22nd, 2021. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Um, so as we move to the um, action items, um, I want to let everybody know that um, Zachariah and I are voluntarily um, recusing ourselves from discussing or voting on the next item. Legally, we are permitted to discuss and legally we are permitted to vote, but knowing the history of the community and everything that's been involved with the community, um, for the sake of perception and just full transparency, Zachariah and I have voluntarily are recusing ourselves. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Chris for action item A. And as soon as action item A is taken care of, we will move on and I will resume um, taking 
the helm. So I give it over to you, Mr. Blessing. Very good, thank you, Matt. Um, so um, this is about the motion to appoint a board secretary. And uh, I've prepared a little statement here. Given a lack of applications for this position as board secretary, Krista Manning has stepped up to offer her expertise and service to the board and the district while we continue to try and fill this position with another community member. She's the only person to submit an application before the deadline. So I'll go ahead and read her application statement. <clears throat> My name is Krista Manning. I am married to the president of the Western Hills Water District Board, President Matthew Manning, Manning, and I am the mother of Board Director Zachariah Manning. It is not my preference nor inclination to apply for Board Secretary, particularly since there are two Manning board members. Since no one else has volunteered, I'm willing to help in this capacity because I have experience that may provide the help that is desperately needed. I have approximately 20 years combined working experience in legal environments, parentheses, law firm and legal departments within medical malpractice insurance company. I have approximately seven years of government affairs experience, which encompassed board secretary duties, managing a political action committee and overseeing federal and state political compliance for the company's political activities. I've worked full-time as an administrator for the last five years. While this volunteer position as board secretary will significantly add burden to my schedule, I am compelled to step up until such time as a replacement can be found or another volunteer is willing to step in. I respectfully request that I not be in this position longer than six months. Now I'm going to unmute Krista and allow her to make a statement if she would like. If you would, would not like to make a statement, Krista, that is perfectly okay. I think there you are. Yeah, you're good, Krista. Um, I oh, it's a little choppy. I'm not really picking up any Thank audio. Um, that's pretty much my, okay, all right, let me move. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> COVID Maybe it's times, just right? not getting the Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> well, right? There you go. Yeah, that's better. So, okay, is that better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that, that's pretty much my statement. Um, I would just add that I'm a homeowner along with my husband and I love this community. I really love it. I, I think it's a gift to live here. And so there's a need. So I'm offering my skill set to hopefully contribute in a meaningful way um, where it's needed. Okay, great. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, that's it. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to mute you back. Sure. All right, at this time, I wanna open the discussion to the board about this appointment. So anybody who's on the board, who is who is muted, I will unmute you. Looks like everyone's unmuted. So we're good to go for that discussion. I personally, as the, as the current secretary, just wanna say thank you to Krista because uh, it's a huge help for me and a huge weight off my back um, and, and, and it'll probably be an, a wonderful learning experience. I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, board of directors and secretarial things, but I would love to add it to my resume and maybe in six months, this whole thing can turn around. I concur 100% that uh, not only do we need to lighten your workload, but um, we need someone dedicated for this position, especially for uh, probably what I would consider the most important aspect of the of the role, which is to prepare the board for these meetings. It's hard for me to believe that this water board has existed for so long without an actual board secretary. I mean, it's no wonder that meetings were almost virtually silent from from this board prior to us being the board. So um, 
I also greatly look forward to someone filling that role. And uh, I understand, um, you know, it may not be the, the most, uh, what's the word? Glamorous. Sorry? Glamorous. Glamorous position. And it may not be, you know, uh, most palatable for a lot of people in the community. But I think people need to look past that and understand that we as a board function in a hobbled state without a board secretary who is dedicated to that 100%. I'd, I'd like to add a little bit to it. This is, this is Linda, for those who don't recognize my voice yet. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of things um, as far as um, the reason, part of the reason that um, we need this is because as most of you um, hopefully know, Ashley is, is technically new in her position. She's still learning her position and um, her, her hands are tied in a lot of ways. Um, in fact, one of our next agenda items is hopefully going to help untie her hands a little bit too. Um, she's in an hourly position um, and also she um, previously Tracy also had a second person who came in the office and worked and we currently do not have a staff member in that per, in that role. So um, not only is Ashley new and she currently is an out as as an hourly paid employee, but she also doesn't have the help that Tracy had when Tracy was doing it. So um, she is extremely handicapped at this point through no fault of her own. Absolutely, very good point, Linda. Uh, completely agree with that. Also want to drive one more point home, and that is that we are continually accepting applications for this position from anyone who ends up being qualified. Uh, you know, you you will be interviewed and uh, considered, um, and that's going to continue on for as long as the six months that Krista may end up being in this position and longer um, until we can find someone who's willing. Absolutely. So. I don't want anyone to think that uh, we're locking this position up or anything like that. Uh, Krista is, is simply being a good community Samaritan and trying to help us out effectively. Um, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for that personally. This is Julie. Hi, Julie. I just wanna, hi, how are you? I just wanna tell Krista, I really appreciate her stepping up to do this. I know that there were no applicants prior to this and um, it sounds like maybe there will be, so maybe she won't have to burden herself with this too long, uh, but I really appreciate it because I guess it's quite possible she'll be there at least the six months, <laughs> but I really appreciate it, Krista. All right, are there any more uh, comments or questions from the board members? All right, um, I think we've covered everything. The other thing I'll drive home is that this is a voluntary non-paid position, just so that everyone knows. Uh, now we're gonna open up the um, public discussion portion of this particular agenda item. So we'll only be discussing this particular agenda item. Um, any questions that aren't related to this agenda item will have to wait until the full public comment period at the end of the meeting. And uh, the way we're gonna do this is everyone's still on mute. At the very bottom of your screen in Zoom, you should see the raise hand button. And so we, if you have a question or a statement, uh, you raise your hand and we will unmute you for your full two minutes. So that can go ahead and start right now. <clears throat> We'll just give everyone a moment to see if they want to raise their hand. Oh, there's one. Carmen, can you hear us? She can, but let me unmute her. All right, Carmen, you're unmuted. Okay, right thank ahead. you. 
Thank you so much. Um, I've been missing the prior meetings, so I don't know if you guys already um, answered the question that I'm going to ask. So I'm just wondering to know if there is if there is any update on the payment of the uh, Kern County Water Agency for the purchase of the water for this fiscal year, and uh, what happened with the payment of the sewer for the city of Patterson? Carmen. Um, yeah. Those questions will have to be asked at the end of the meeting in the in oh, the public comment okay. section. Sorry, yeah, this is um, this is comment just for this agenda item only. Oh, I'm but sorry, we'll, I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. Okay. You're right. okay, that's okay. No, we'll get back no, to I it. I don't have comments. In okay, fact, cool. Thank you, Chris. No worries. Step, uh, no worries. Position because I know how difficult it is to find people to really um, apply for this type of position on the part of the Western Higuara District. I know it's very very difficult. So thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. All right. And Carmen, you can uh, click, I think you can click raise hand again to unraise your hand. Um, and I'll just wait a moment for anyone else who wants to raise their hand. I think while we're on the topic of uh, secretarial things, um, I just want to point out that there is always the option to send concerns or questions ahead of time to myself and sounds like moving forward to Krista and we're, if you're uncomfortable talking in this forum, we're, we're welcome, you're welcome to submit that and we'll submit it for you. Absolutely. If you want to provide something in writing to the office directly, Ashley is happy to take it at the office or you can mail it in. Um, and those particular things, you know, will have to be included in, in, a, uh, in a discussion in the future. I understand not everyone is going to be comfortable talking on Zoom and, and uh, you know, having their video shown or whatever it may be. So uh, we, we board, the whole board understands that. So there is a new, another conduit uh, for you to get your concerns voiced and heard in these meetings. Um, it just understand that any, you know, certain things will have to be reviewed ahead of time and or there may be some communication back and forth with you to determine, to fully determine the extent of your questions or concerns. Um, that's just, you know, going to be standard, uh, standard procedure, basically, as if we were talking to you on the phone. All right, it looks like uh, no one else is raising their hand unless Carmen, I'm gonna check with you one more time because I don't wanna leave you out. Okay. Uh, Carmen, do you have anything else you'd like to say on the appointment of board secretary? No. Okay, just checking your hand still there is, raised. There is nobody who's contesting our game. That's right, that's right. I'm gonna, um, I'll mute you back. Thank you. Okay, so that will close the comment period for this. Um, Board of Directors, anything else to discuss? Ashley, any comment? Uh, I, I have nothing aside from my thanks in the beginning. Um, I do know that we may have to go in and unmute them manually. Uh, yeah, we do. Have have to unmute people manually because uh, we hold we hold the mute button keys at Got this it. point. I'm going to go ahead um, and but our president. Chris, even though I'm not discussing any of this, um, if any of the board directors want to ask Krista any type of technical question, they are free to do that as well. Just so hopefully that was clear in the first part of our discussions. But yes, I agree. Uh, at this point, board of directors can ask questions or discuss whatever. And thank you, Matt. Uh, let's see, Zechariah is still muted as well, but I'm assuming he's wanting to be muted. Yeah, we're not right. making any comments or um, voting. Okay, so it sounds like there's nothing else to discuss. Uh, I'm gonna make a motion to uh, vote on this agenda item, vote on this appointment to appoint Krista Manning as our new board secretary. Can I get a second? I second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 
I. I said I at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that three eyes? <laughs> That's three yeah, eyes. I, I, I think Matt and um, Zachariah would have to physically say abstain if they are not going to vote. All right, let me unmute. Um, oh, he's already unmuted. All right, you guys go ahead and say abstain. I will abstain from this vote. I'm going to abstain from this vote as well. All right, that's three out of five. The motion passes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I should add that um, this is contingent upon uh, Krista being sworn in officially uh, by Ashley, which will happen uh, in the next coming few days. Yeah, basically, um, so there's continuity. Um, we wanna only have one board secretary at a time. And so Ashley will be finishing out this meeting and doing up the minutes for this meeting. And then at that time, we will have Krista sworn in at the um, offices. All right, great. Meetings back to you, Mr. Manning. Thank you, sir. Um, all right, motion B. Um, for action items is to approve the purchase of security cameras. And I'm gonna to toss this over to Zachariah. Um, he's done a lot of work on this. And so you can uh, let us know what you found out. And in the board packet, um, actually, actually not the board packet, but the emails that were sent um, today. Um, and there was a correction also because I sent the wrong form. Um, you can see the invoices that Zechariah will be talking about. So if you guys got those emails um, at the very, just, just before the meeting started, probably around 2.30 or 3, um, look at those emails and those will have the invoices. And Zechariah, you can go from here. All right, cool. So this past week, I've begun looking into getting some security cameras. I think it's important to get that set up for our main office. Um, and so I spent quite a bit of time looking at different solutions. I spent a lot of time looking online uh, to basically purchase the hardware ourselves and then potentially um, install it ourselves. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of boxes to check uh, that we want to make sure that we cover. Specifically uh, for the interior, we want to have continuous recording and we want to have the ability to upload to the cloud. So that was something that was definitely a must have. And when you're searching online and trying to find those things, it becomes very difficult to find a quality solution that offers that offices, excuse me, that offers all of those uh, options. So I reached out to a local vendor at Central Valley Alarm, and I've got a very reasonable quote uh, from my investigation and in, in similar solutions. And so basically, what I'm going to suggest to the board here is that we go for the interior. We're going to have three. Um, cameras that are going to be saved to uh, the cloud, and it's going to give us uh, quite a bit of, of storage for about 30 days or so. And, and so that's going to have three wired cameras on the interior, and then we're also going to have two uh, wireless cameras on the exterior. So those are going to be blank cameras. And so I've got the totals here. I'm not sure if you guys want me to run through the numbers um, of what we're going to be exactly approving in terms of the invoicing. So the Zach, can I just interrupt purchase. you real quick? What's that? I'm sorry. Never mind. Forgive me. Carry on. Oh, okay. So the blink cameras will be purchased um, online, and we will be. I will be volunteering to do that install myself, um, just to save us some money. I think it's it's something that I'm able to to do relatively easily. Um, in terms of the interior cameras, because of the cloud storage and because of the professional nature of the install, we're going to, I'm, I'm suggesting that we go with Central Valley Alarm and the invoice and the quote that they provided. And so if you guys want me to share the numbers, I'm happy to do so. Um, let me know what information you'd like me to go over and uh, we can begin discussions on that. I have, a, I have the uh, invoice here, uh, the potential estimate, I should say, and yeah. it, it looks fine to me. I mean, it's got, it's got the uh, network video recorder box. Right. Uh, the question I have for you is the NVR has uh, local storage capability, and then we have cloud storage capability on top of that. So everything's automatically synced to the cloud, I assume. Correct. And uh, we, both, we have both a local and a cloud version of those particular recordings. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so the way it's the way it's going to work is we will have an on-site backup uh, stored on a physical hard drive. And then it's basically the cloud is just going to mirror whatever we have locally. Excellent. Excellent. Um, That's perfect. Yeah. 
And then I think the blink cameras are a great solution for outside. You and I both know that's just screwing a mount to the wall and you pop the camera in there and you're good to go. Right. Uh, there is one little um, receiver unit that you need to have inside the building that's, you know, either uh, that's physically plugged into or uh, wirelessly connected to your network inside the building. That's not an issue down there as far as uh, distance from the cameras or anything like that. So I think that that's a fine solution um, and very cost effective, if you ask me. Can I speak to just one thing that I think might uh, come up just in dealing with customer service? Um, can, can there be some reassurance with cameras? Because I know I work with a lot of uh, people's sensitive information. Um, I just want to be totally sure that that's protected and, and just, uh, I guess, reassure the community that, that that will all be protected as well. Yeah, I don't think that the cameras, I mean, they're about four megapixel, um, but I don't believe they're going to be able, they don't have zoom capability or anything like that. So they're not going to be able to get close enough to have any, you know, personal identifiable information or anything like that. So I think we're good on that front. Um, pretty much just going to be able to recognize faces, shapes, things of that nature. So if there's an attempt to rob the place or if there's some sort of security breach where, you know, someone working in there is, is uh, you know, in danger or something like that, we'd be able to, to, to hand it over to the authorities. So I think that in terms of the information on desks or in, in folders or on pieces of paper, or even computers, I think is going to be is going to be fine. Perfect. I'm just trying to think of the questions that may come up in in passing. And also, um, just to add, uh, Zachariah, am I correct that the invoice that we're seeing um, there's going to be another charge on there for the yes. um, for the DVR? Right. So the total for the entire package, and actually piggybacking on what Chris just said, I, I'll, I'll be forthright. I wasn't aware. Is there something that we actually need to purchase additionally inside that links up to those blink cameras? Because my understanding it just links to. No, it comes with the receiver. It, it essentially, they call that the blink module, and that's what okay. your cameras talk to. And the blink module is what controls those cameras' um, settings, configuration, etc whether they're enabled or disabled, um, you know, they can be on a schedule um, or not, that sort of thing. We're not gonna concern ourselves with that sort of stuff, I imagine. Uh, okay. So yeah, no, the, the Blink system that you have there, the two pack, it comes with everything you need. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. And I also want to mention that, um, so yeah, we will be adding the hard drive to the total here on this invoice that was not included as a line item. Um, but the good news is, with that, it's a single upfront cost. So if the cloud is gonna come with that, so there's not gonna be an ongoing cost. Generally with cloud recording, you'll find that it's around $10 to $15 per camera per month. So that can be kind of a large overhead, but this one-time fee, we buy the hard drive and it's a very reasonable price. It's a special type of hard drive that's needed uh, for the application. And, uh, and then the cloud recording is just basically included in that, so. Great. Are these uh, interior cameras, um, are they fancy? Like, do they rotate or, or pan or anything like that? Or are they fixed? Uh, they're fixed. There is one-way audio. So if we want to, um, you know, if someone's, you know, if we want to, for whatever reason, communicate with somebody in the office, um, then, then that can be done, you know, via the app or via the browser. So we can Is it one-way uh, or two-way? It actually records audio too. Yeah, so it would be the user speaking to the person on the other side of the camera. Sure. Okay, but it does also record audio in, right? Yes. Correct. Okay, good. Good, good. So good. We're not overkilling it here with like fancy turret cameras that rotate where you have no, a joystick on your phone, no. you know, or anything like that. Um, in my opinion, that, that's, that's a very reasonable price. Uh, yeah, exactly yeah. right. The um, total for for Central Valley Alarm is one thousand five twenty three. How much more for the um, the hard drive combo with the cloud thing for the thirty days? What what's the up price on that? Okay, so I was assured that the hard drive price is a great price. Um, I was able to negotiate a little bit of a lower price for the hard drive. So um, we're looking at three hundred forty two dollars for the eight terabyte. And that's going to give us 30 days worth of storage. Okay, so three, 342 added. So we'll add that. Yeah, so basically we're looking at a total running total um, of $2,059.16. 
So that's including the hardware and installation on the invoice or the quote or the estimate, whatever we want to call it. Uh, $342 for the hard drive, $194.16 for the Blink cameras. And that totals $2,059.16. Great. And uh, just to recap, the monthly cost of the cloud storage is included. Yes. Uh, that's what I was told. And I specifically asked that question. Um, I actually spoke to, I believe he is the owner of the company. Um, he, he was working directly with me. And so, yeah, he, he assured me that it's, it's included. I mean, I was actually surprised by that myself, to be honest with you. So, um, but yeah. Better get it in writing, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That actually may be a good idea. All right, does, does anybody, does any other board member have any questions regarding the cameras? All right, then I'm gonna open it up really quick. Um, one minute one minute only um, comments from the community. If anybody has a question that they would like to ask regarding the cameras before we take a vote. Um, anybody from the community that would like to ask a question regarding the cameras? I have uh, Doug, Doug a Moore. Yeah, Doug, I'm gonna go ahead. Doug, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you now. Hi, Doug. We can't actually unmute people. We have to ask them to unmute. So okay, there it. will be always a delay. Hey, Doug. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this uh, system, can you pull it up from, uh, can the board of directors pull it up from their own computers? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. So you can actually see real time what's going on in, up at the uh, processing plant. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. Uh, this, this doesn't have anything to do with the plant. This is just the offices. Oh, right. the offices. Okay, are yeah, there going to be any cameras up at the plant? We have not looked into that at this time. Um, what's going to happen is, is um, due to COVID and everything, I wanted to have all the board members have a tour of the place, but it's just going to be it's just gonna to be too difficult with social distancing, masks, um, open to the public, all of these kind of factors that have to weigh in if the board does it all together. So we're gonna be kind of doing a two by two thing. And as um, Linda and, um, and Chris are gonna be the first two that go up to the plant and they're gonna take a tour and they're mm -hmm. gonna to get to know all of the employees and kind of get a run through of everything. If they report back that they see a concern or they think it would be wise to have cameras up there, they can report that back to us. And then as each um, of us go up to have our tour, um, we'll be taking into consideration that. And then we as a board will discuss that in the future. That is a possibility though, yes. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, one other question um, is uh, this information being passed on to the uh, Homeowner Association, we could use some cameras. From the uh, standpoint, what what meaning what? I was thinking of the camp. Uh, there's been talk of putting a camera, having an active camera up at the guard shack. Uh, apparently, the one up there it never works. Never works. I, and it, good. No, yeah, I think I think, and I could be wrong, but I do believe we addressed the cameras at another HOA meeting about a year ago, and I believe they all got fixed and were working. Um, we could look into that again. Um, okay. But, but but yeah, we can um, we can share the information that we've gotten with security and the HOA as well because we think this is a pretty good deal that we got going here. It um, sounds like it. Uh, the the other is up where the parking area is. That'd be a great place for a camera. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Doug. And and just uh, let me um, interject this. It, it's kind of off waterboard topic a smidge, but because it has to do with security. Um, and Doug just brought this up. Uh, we have, um, there's gonna be um, the 911 operating system is gonna be being removed out of the clubhouse uh, because TID um, is not getting paid by Angels Crossing. And so the 911 system is gonna go down. So um, I've worked with the 911 operators and along with um, Mike, um, um, Michael Oliver, and um, both of us have worked with them directly and they're gonna be moving um, all of that stuff up by the fire department. And when the tower goes up on the fire department, we're probably gonna look at um, putting one of these type of cameras up 
looking at the overflow lot, which is going to help bring security to the overflow lot. But that's a whole other topic for the HOA. But I wanted to just let you know that those are all little things that are that are going on in our community that we're we're tied into. So that's going to help just information to go out. Very good. Okay, any other questions regarding security cameras at our offices here? Uh, real quick, uh, SAC AG INV, you had a question, you had your hand up, but then you lowered your hand, I think. I just want to make sure that you did that on purpose. If you want to raise your hand again, feel free. Otherwise, we'll assume that you uh, your question was answered. I see Andrea has her hand up. Uh, yes. While SAC IV thinks about it, let's go ahead and unmute Andrea. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I have a question regarding the um, security cameras. Is there a reason for these security cameras? Are we, is there been any criminal activity? I'm just concerned why we're having cameras put up or you guys are having them when there's 24 hour security patrolling. Sure, thank you for your question. Um, no, there hasn't been any um, thing that I'm necessarily um, worried about. Um, however, we think it's important that because we do have cash on site and we have money on site for the safety of our employees um, that work up there, um, that there be cameras for their own safety and security. We think it's just a wise thing to do. Um, we're kind of a long way away from you know, law enforcement and you know, our security can only do limited things. Um, so this just gives added peace of mind and protection. And also late at night, when we have one security guard traveling around this entire facility, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard for someone to want to break in or do some type of damage. And we just always wanna make sure that the Western Hills Water District files are secure and our employees are secure when they're working up there during the day. So it's just one of those precautionary things that we're doing and we think it's wise um to do that i'd also like to add that there used to be a security system installed there yeah. and it was effectively disabled at some point by who knows who and this is effectively restoring that security to the site that i think is i agree is very important especially for our employees especially for ashley who works there you know she's the only one in the office mm -hmm. So you want to think of it kind of effectively as your home alone with the door unlocked and anybody <laughs> could walk in at any time. Agreed. <laughs> Dog agrees too. Dog agrees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any more hands raised. Cool. All right. Um, anybody else? All righty. So um, I would like to make a motion to approve the expenditure of $2,059.62 for us to go ahead and purchase cameras for the Western Hills Water District offices. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to motion C, motion to create a position for the Western Hills Water District office manager position. And I'm gonna let Linda um, talk about this. I just wanna um, also say, I am so thankful for Linda. Um, she has done an amazing job. She's got a couple of kids at home. She's homeschooling. She's doing a lot of stuff and she has found, it, found time to put a, um, a position together. And um, I, I just, Thank you, Linda, from the depth of my heart, because I, I think it's amazing how, how quick you were able to come up with this and get it together. And um, the community, you guys, we have a great board right now. Everybody's doing an awesome job. So Linda, take it from here, because um, you've done a fabulous job putting this together. Okay, um, first, I want to apologize for not having my camera on like everyone else. Unfortunately, my internet is acting up, and every time I turn it on, I get booted out of the meeting. So um, I'm sorry, but you'll have to settle with my voice today. Um, and I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the position. Um, first off, Ashley's title is currently um, as a manager, and that position has always been titled as a manager. However, 
we are not treating it like a manager position, yet we are expecting um, that position to have the responsibilities of a manager. Most of you, um, I think, will agree that managers are, are usually never hourly um, paid employees. They're always sal salary paid employees. Um, and so what we wanted to do was um, what it well actually what we did was we rewrote the job description so that Ashley and anyone in the future will have a very clear picture of what we are asking that position to do. Um, we are also um, asking to change that position from an hourly paid position to a salary position. Um, I think tonight is a great uh, point of, of order here. Um, it is, um, looks like 5.41 at night and Ashley's still at work. So um, because we are asking her to work at different hours of the day and night, um, it's a little bit tough to um, keep track of an hourly schedule that way. So if we just put her on a salary, um, it makes it covers all of these bases. It also covers the board as well, um, as far as getting with employment laws and all of that. It's a lot easier just to say, okay, she's a salaried employee. So all of these employment laws that have to do with hourly employees, um, we, we, we have them covered. Um, so her position would actually be a salaried exempt in position. Um, and we, because she does deal with um, the board, um, even though we will now have Krista as a board, there's still spillover. So she will be dealing with the board as well. So there is also the confidential um, aspect of it too, which also gives not only the board, but actually some extra protections as a confidential employee. So um, I'm asking that the board change the position from an hourly position, which means should we approve this tonight, that position, the hourly position will actually be eliminated and the new position will become a salaried position. So I may, um, let's just open it up for toss back and forth. Does anybody have any comments? I have a comment. I think, I think this is a great move. Um, and I've read the job description and I think Linda did an extremely professional job putting it together. It's top to bottom. And yep. I couldn't agree more that, uh, you know, being a salary employee would be the best for, for a management position. Absolutely. Um, uh, I just, uh, you know, I hope the rest of the board agrees, frankly, I'm not really sure if, if uh, everyone's had a chance to review it yet, but hopefully. Zachariah or Julie, do you guys have any comments? I would just echo what Chris was saying. I agree. I think it's a good idea. And uh, I don't have too much to add, but I would support that for sure. And Julie, anything that you'd like to say? Um, no, I would support that. I I think Linda does, uh, has done a great job and Ashley does good work. I haven't really worked with her much, but um, I do know she... She does a pretty good job and uh, anything that can help. Yes. All right, well then I make a motion to create the new position for the Western Hills Water District Office Manager. Do I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to point D. Consideration and approval of resolution number 202103, resolution of the Western Hills Water District, reapproval of an expenditure of approximately 50, uh, excuse me, regarding approval of expenditure of approximately $50,000 of Diablo Grande Community Facility District number one, Melrose bond refinance proceeds for the payment of immediate Western Hills Water District expenses. And I just want to take this opportunity to let you know that Moving forward, as we have a new board secretary in the board packets that will begin coming out, um, there will be a itemizing of what the this money is for. Um, obviously, Ashley and Mark will work together to produce information that will be given to the board secretary to where she will be able to put it in a packet form to produce to all of us 
So before coming to a meeting, we will have exactly what the money is going to and why, um, which I think is, is really important. And um, so once again, we don't have that information in any kind of packet for you guys, um, but this is for immediate expenses. Um, it's the ongoing expenses because the subsidy is not being covered or paid by Angels Crossing. And we always are running into uh, a problem there. So uh, we need the 50,000 to pay our bills. So I'm just um, gonna make a motion to consider and approve this resolution. Do I get a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, we're gonna move on to now reports um, by board members. Um, as I said a moment ago that Linda has done an amazing job, so has Chris Blessing. Um, we've worked together, but you have done a lot of homework here and put um, an amazing slideshow together for the community. We have told you that we wanna be transparent with you. And this is now going to begin the starting of that new relationship between the Western Hills Water District and the community. We are gonna start with um, a presentation tonight that Chris has worked hours and hours on. And it's been ran through not only myself, but um, David Hobbs. We've gone back and forth and we've been able to get everything solidified. And Chris has this awesome presentation to present to the community. And I'm just saying, take it away, Chris. Um, once, the, once we get through the whole thing, we're gonna open up for comments or questions regarding the presentation only. And again, it will be one minute comments or questions and we will be able to field a lot of those answers. If not, we'll let you know that we'll get back to you on the answers. All right, Chris, take it away. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, appreciate the compliments. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes. Great. You're good. Yep. Um, if uh, Ashley, if you don't mind keep, keeping an eye out for people raising their hand, uh, if they can't see the presentation, I want to address that. Sure. Make sure they can. But we're not gonna we're not gonna stop and answer questions. Not, not for questions, right? Right. So, people, um, folks, if you have questions as the presentation is going through, kind of jot them down on a piece of paper, and then at the end, we'll you can ask questions. Yes. All right, let me take a deep breath. This isn't gonna be terribly long, but it is full of information. And I just hope that the community can, uh, you know, walk along with me here and, and digest this information. We will, like uh, Matt said, we'll get to some Q and A at the end. I've also taken the liberty of writing up a few preemptive questions that you might have uh, towards the end of the presentation. So we'll walk through that. And at the very end of the presentation, which by the way, this presentation will be made public on the website. Uh, you'll find links to all the reference documents and you'll also find my email address where you can contact me if you have any questions. I have no problems with that. So let's get started. <laughs> How did we get to the point where we are now? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you already know this history, but for those who don't, uh, in particular me, you know, I just moved here in 2017, a relatively short time ago. I didn't know most of this information until basically last year. So uh, the original and current standing Kern Water County Agency, KWCA agreement was established in June of 2000. Uh, that was done in, in partnership with DG LP, the original developers here. They went bankrupt in 2008. World International purchased Diablo Grande, all villages, if I'm not mistaken, one through five in 2009. Then in April, 2020, as most of you know by now, Angels Crossing uh, was transferred that property from World International. The original master plan, if you don't know, called for 5,000 homes up here, along with a lot of other things like more golf courses and uh, hotel and shopping and all kinds of good stuff. 
Um, Village One, Oak Flat, that's where we live now. That was uh, slated for 2,000 homes in totality, with the other 3,000 going to the other villages that remain to this day uh, undeveloped agricultural land effectively. As of 2021, only 600 homes have been built, including those new homes that went in a couple of years ago, you may recall. The water district is extremely underfunded because of this lack of development. As you can imagine, the costs borne to us ratepayers were speculatively put in place because uh, they anticipated more development. They anticipated the full build out and it just never happened. So that's how we've gotten to the point where we are today, where we're just extremely underfunded and we'll get into that in a minute. Oops, got ahead of myself there. So. Originally, as part of the approval process for the Diablo Grande Master Plan, Stanislaus required that the project have a source water equal to 8,000 acre feet to meet that demand of 5,000 homes, several golf courses, a hotel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, initially in 2001, that plan began at 1,200 acre feet, uh, sort of uh, in a cadence with building out the community. As you can imagine, that's not just gonna happen in one year. Uh, so they planned to scale up the acre feet allotment uh, uh, and I believe th thus the, do the bill due from the water district to KWCA uh, to the 8,000 final acre feet in 2013. And you can see here from the, oops, from the original, <laughs> water schedule that is part of the KCWA Diablo Grande water agreement, which you can read, uh, that that's how it was. From 2001 to 2012, it was less than 8,000. And then from 2013 to 2035, it's 8,000. Makes sense for, you know, a couple thousand homes at least, right? Now, uh, a lot of you might not know what SWP is, but that's the state water project. They are the gods of water in the state of California. And um, they're the ones who set the allocation percentage for exactly how much water you get, even though you may be paying for a lot more uh, because water, as you all know, is a very scarce resource. And there's simply not enough to go around sometimes, especially in a drought year. Uh, the current allocation is set at 10%. That is down from the two revisions in 2020. They can actually set it as low as 0% if they want, if they need to. And that did happen, although it did get revised to 5%. If I remember correctly, there's two times per year that they revise these numbers, but I'm not sure if they can, they can probably just revise them at any time that's needed, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, just some quick calculations. You know, if we're at 5%, we're getting 400 acre feet. If we're at 10%, we're getting 800 acre feet. 400 is less than we currently use with 600 homes and would require some water saving measures that we would all have to participate in. And uh, if we do dip below allocation wise, what we actually need to consume, then we end up buying banked water uh, at, a, at a much higher cost, uh, which I don't actually have the cost numbers on. But as I know, that happened in 2014. And as you can imagine, our district doesn't need higher costs for anything right now. <laughs> so let's get into some nitty gritty about how this district's been mismanaged. In 2019, uh, due to world's inability or refusal, if you wanna call it that, to further develop Diablo Grande, world indicated they would no longer continue to subsidize the Western Hills Water District operations. What that means is the developer decided no longer to adhere to the master agreement between the water district and the developer themselves. World ceased making payments for golf course water and, and is or was currently delinquent in the amount of approximately $515,000 as of April, 2020. April, 2020 is significant for another reason. Angels Crossing acquired Diablo Grande from World and AC signed the AAR, the Assumption 
assignment assumption and release agreement and agreed to fund the subsidy moving forward and also agreed that they would pay world's delinquent water bill of the 515,000 aforementioned. Also the delinquent amounts to Kern County and the city of Patterson, the Kern County water bill stands as of 1-1-2021 at 2.9 million, give or take. And the delinquent Melarus obligations, which we don't have a current number for, but as of April 2020, per the AAR, it's right around 8.7 million. AC also racked up a water bill of, of nearly 400,000, and that's in addition to the 515,000 before the water was shut off to the golf course. That gets to my next point, late 2020, golf course water was shut off by the water district due to non-payment. This is a copy that, of the promissory, if you wanna call it that, letter from Angels Crossing, uh, signed by Don Hale Jr. Uh, stating as much that, uh, let's see if I can pick a quote out here. Uh, the first step in this effort is to express our full intent to remedy any and all outstanding liabilities. That's the third paragraph. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it. It's available for your for your reading and, pleasure. And I want to jump in right there. They also state that they will start making payments within 30 days. That's a very yeah. important statement in this. Um, it's in paragraph one, two, three, four. It says, with the input of the Western Hills Water District, it is, it is our plan to first educate our group on the current status of the community, then strategizing how, strategizing how to best meet its needs. We plan to introduce next steps within the first business week of possession with an intent to begin setting past financial liabilities within the first 30 days. And we are here around what, nine or 10 months now, and we have not received any money. That's correct. Only legal challenge. All right, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. Feel free to chime in. Uh, you have more history on this than I do. The AAR, which I mentioned before, the Assignment Assumption and Release Agreement, the Western Hills Water District Board ratified the assignment of the Master Agreement Obligations, also available at the end of this presentation, from World to Angels Crossing at its April 24th, 2020 meeting. My, those minutes from that meeting are available and the agenda are available on the website. Uh, Guillermo uh, was directed to sign as president after the board approved, of course. Uh, requests and demands from the district to Angels Crossing for their financials and abilities to fund were rejected. That's just a fact. This is a copy of the AAR. Again, it'll be available for you uh, on the website and or at the end of this presentation. Um, I'll just quickly go over some of these bullet points. Here's the 500 in bu bullet point C. Hopefully everyone can read this. I know it's kind of small. Bullet point C lays out the 515,601 in past due water charges. Um, bullet point E lays out the 8.7 million plus in Melarus obligations and Further on down the line here in bullet point G, if you get through to the third sentence, the funding obligations of 1.13 million, um, the numbers are, are high, obviously. And uh, I should add that this is in effect as of April 30th, 2020. Uh, to date, my knowledge, and Matt, you can correct me on this, is that none of this has been taken care of. None of it. Very good. So what's our current financial status? Well, I'm gonna hand that over to our new treasurer and a man I have great faith in, Mr. Mark Kovich, uh, to speak on that. And um, temporarily, I'm just gonna take the presentation away so that he can speak on it. Does it don't uh, you have the graph up? Why, don't he, why doesn't he talk over the graph? All right, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to hand it over to me, Chris. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Just Here's your graph. Slide. Yep, I'll explain this to the public. I'd like there's before I explain this graph, there's a something I'd like to mention to people on the call that we hadn't discussed yet. And I find it very perplexing that 
you know, Angels Crossings uh, were talking to World for quite a long time regarding this whole agreement and that there was ample time for them to do due diligence on the water district. And um, I think that just needs to be on the record. So just, you know, keep that in consideration. So anyways, Absolutely. what I'm going to, what, what, what I've done so far, folks, um, I've been at the off district office a lot, reviewing the numbers, what's occurred. I, I want to, I'm doing a full financial audit to make sure that everything is clean and we understand what's really transpired. And what I want to show you folks here is that this is a graph starting back from the beginning when World Air National had taken over Diablo Grande and was, you know, running the water district uh, from the get go. And to world's credit, and I, I think we need to acknowledge that they have done a lot in the past as far as keeping the water district, you know, going and afloat. And what this graph represents are contributions for every half of the year since they came into the picture, showing subsidy and water charges that were paid for uh, for basically water going onto the course. Um, and you can see it's a lot of money. Uh, it's uh, totaling over $21 million in a 10-year period. That's not chump change. And the thing that, if you notice towards the latter half of the graph, uh, starting in the second half of 2019, how the, the financing and the, the money that was coming into the water district has really fallen off. In fact, you can see it, you know, second half of 2018, first half of 2019, second half of 2019 is just falling off and then disappearing altogether uh, for a full year. And we're going into another half year here with virtually no uh, subsidy or, uh, or or payment of water charges uh, whatsoever, even though the, the water's been turned off to the golf course. And so it's quite apparent that without this additional funding to help our water district, uh, we're in a very dire financial situation and that some hard decisions are going to have to be made by us community members as far as what we want to do going forward. Um, it's apparent that, uh, you know, they're not paying the bills and that can't be stressed enough. And I think people need to see this graph and understand the contributions that were made by world. You know, I know that in the past, a lot of us had our, our, um, you know, complaints or comments about world international, but again, to their credit, you know, they did do a lot as far as, you know, keeping that water district or water districts alive for all these years. And, and the reasons why they stopped is still perplexing to me. And the reasons why Angels Crossing has come in and acquired this development and still refused to pay based on a contractual agreement is, is still perplexing to me and along with others. So that's basically it in a nutshell. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer that at the end of the presentation. So, Chris. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, great, Mark. great summary. Okay, so how can we rectify this problem? Um, well, I should, I should note that the community is going to have to come together here to rectify this. This is not going to happen just because board members uh, make a certain decision or we find some hidden stash of ten million dollars somewhere. Um, the short answer is. The water district needs to look at implementing a water rate increase for the entire community. Right now, uh, my understanding is the water district has uh, consultants who are working on uh, various case scenarios around what that water rate increase could look like. Uh, we're hoping that by March, we'll have concrete numbers that we'll be able to present to you uh, as a community. And um, can, can I interject something right here, Chris? Okay. Um, just so the community understands, um, we had a, um, a water rate study that began back in, I believe it was August, and we came up with a lot of different numbers. Um, one thing um, that we have um, realized at this juncture, giving Angels Crossing the benefit of the doubt over and over and over again, thinking that they and hoping that they would pay um, and, and, and fulfill their contractual obligations, what we've realized is they're not going to even pay their water bill. And, um, you know, they were sort of budgeted for somewhere around $700,000 a year for paying water. 
even though that's really low. Uh, um, that was kind of their number, if I remember correctly. They wanted to be budgeted somewhere around seven hundred thousand a year, and I, I just, um, or is that a year or a month? No, a year. And um, I, I don't. That just doesn't. That in of itself was very low. But we were looking at that in the first rate study back in August when we had our ad hoc committee and everything. And um, what we're gonna be presenting to the community, hopefully in March, um, I should have numbers by the end of February. Um, we had to remove that 700,000 um, because we're, we can't pretend or hope that Angels Crossing is going to even pay that with the track record they've had for nine, 10 months. Um, we just can't. Um, so we're having to redo this, the, the, um, the rate study, taking out that 700,000 that the first rate study was sort of looking at. So we're gonna have some different numbers. We're waiting for those numbers. And I think M March is going to be our, our busy month. Um, and we're going to be communicating with the community um, on how that looks. But to Chris's point, the, the rates are going to have to go up or we're going to lose our homes. I mean, that's just a reality that the community is going to have to understand. Um, I'm doing everything in my power to keep the amount low, as low as I can. But the reality is <clears throat> the bills have to get paid. And it's a reality that the community is going to have to grapple with and come to understanding. And we are going to continue to be very transparent and open about everything. And that's why we're starting in this month with this demonstration. So with that, Chris. Thank you very much for that detail, Matt. That's important for everyone to realize. Um, we're, you know, we're not trying to be delivering bad news here, but that's, this is reality. Uh, and like you said, if, if, if we cannot pay the bills going forward, we will not, we may not, we may not be able to have water, which is un purely unsustainable for the community, as anyone can imagine. Uh, just a couple more points on the rate increase. So the rate increase would not be for covering capital, capital expenditures. That's things like pump repairs or infrastructure or uh, any sort of equipment that's needed for the plants, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that is still a TBD item. How do we do that? And uh, the whole point of the rate increase is to get the district to a, basically a year over year or month to month at least solvency where we aren't owing money on our bills going forward anymore. It's not going to solve the problem of our debts, but it will solve the problem of paying for active water usage going forward. Mm -hmm. And Matt, you can correct me on that unless that's correct. No, that is absolutely correct. Perfect. The big takeaway though, the really big takeaway that I hope everyone in the community can really get behind, because it's something that this poor community has struggled with for 20 years, is not having to rely on a developer to subsidize the water district anymore. If we can break free of that shackle, then a developer who doesn't develop is no longer a problem for us. A developer who does develop is a great boon for us. And you know, potentially water rates get reassessed when that does happen, right? Um, just as a reminder, we are a nonprofit public entity here. So, you know, we're not trying to profit off the backs of our community members. We, we just want to be able to pay the bills and keep the water flowing. And I know that's all I care about at this point. All I want to be sure of is that I can stay in my home and I'm going to have water coming to it and I can water my, my grass out back and, you know, and be then, a normal homeowner, right. And, and not have to have some catch basin in the middle of uh, the mountains, collecting and, all the rainwater that doesn't fall. And to chime in on that, Chris, to sure. and to your point on this, which is very important for the community to understand, by raising our rates and covering the subsidy and being able to continue to move forward, we will be in a position to look better to a developer, whether that developer is World International, whether that developer is Angels Crossing, whether that developer is somebody that we don't even know in the future we will look much better to a developer if they can come in and actually just start building and doing what they need to do. 
And, um, and then again, to Chris's point, it takes the stress off of whether we are worried about whether we're going to get water to our homes. And that's the biggest thing for me. Absolutely. 100% agree. Okay, moving on. That was a long one. I know. I hope everyone's still with us. So what can we do about world and AC not performing to date? Uh, we're going to have to keep this pretty high level, as hopefully most of you can imagine and accept. But basically, any legal avenue we can pursue, we will explore to its fullest possible extent. Uh, and we already okay. are. Sorry? And we already are. And we already are. And of and course, that's already begun, yes. But uh, continuing forward, anything else that we can figure out we, that we can go after, we will. Um, there have been liens already filed on AC and world properties. I'm sure they're already aware of that. Uh, that applies to any property that they own in the county. Another very important note is that there is no bailout for Western Hills Water District here. There is no state savior. There is no agency that's gonna come in and just say, oh, okay, well, we'll run it now. Uh, that's just not gonna happen. It doesn't happen. Um, so it's very important that we as a community take care of this. I, I know it's a burden for everyone, but. I want, can I please interject something here? Um, there is a lot of rumor, um, some created by Angels Crossing that, oh, the state will never let the water get shut off. Oh, this and that and the other thing. I'm telling you, that is not a factual statement. Um, just look at Stockton when it went bankrupt. That's probably the most recent case. I mean, there could be others, but that's one that's very recent to us. When Stockton went bankrupt, they did not come in. The state did not come in and bail them out and say, you can continue to have water. Um, that's not how it happened. They had to get a water entity to buy them out and to, you know, there was a lot involved in that whole process. So I'm just letting you know that there is no state bailout, no matter what comes out of the mouth of anyone from Angels Crossing or just the rumor mill. That's just not a fact. It is not a fact. And I think the community needs to understand this, that there is no savior on that point. Of course, if water were to be shut off, we would have our lawyer immediately file an injunction that injunction would last for a short period of time while we began to figure out what we were going to do. My point is, is to never see that happen. I want Absolutely. to create a way to never, ever enter into that position, which would throw us all into a very bad situation. All right, let's get to some happier news. There are actually benefits to doing this, like we've talked about already, but uh, obviously, number one, we'll still continue to get clean drinking water, which is absolutely required. Uh, we won't see a plummet in home values because there's no more water service to this neighborhood. Uh, again, we would not be financially dependent on our developer to subsidize the water district and keep the water flowing. Another important point, the rate increase would be adopted subject to a provision that if Western Hills Water District is successful in obtaining recovery against the delinquent parties, those funds would be used to offset rates to the extent that it is economically viable and to the best interest of ratepayers. So if we can, we will, basically, is what that says. And uh, I mean, one can only guess what would prevent that from happening. It, it would only be something we would know in the future. And let me just chime in on that. I know that one of the biggest um, things for us as a board that we've been, you know, in our own understanding of how this all is working out is if we're going to ask the community to pay the subsidy that a developer by contract is supposed to be paying, we want to make sure and ensure that the community knows that we will fight and we will fight and we will fight and we will fight whatever battle needs to be fought to collect, receive judgments and collect. 
um, from developers, whether it be World Angels Crossing or even a new developer in the future that may come in, negotiating with them to once again put money into the subsidy so we can lower rates or give back some type of a rebate um, to the community. We are not going to allow Angels Crossings to benefit up here if you and me and all of us are having to pay the subsidy because they're not wanting to. We are going to do whatever it takes to make sure that they're held accountable for their breach of contract and their refusal to pay what needs to be paid. So the community who are listening, you can understand and know that we are not just, let's raise rates and move forward. No, we're raising rates because we know it's a survival situation. But at the same time, we want you to know that we will um, use whatever measures we can. Um, of course, when, it, when you're dealing with the law and you're dealing with courts and you're dealing with judgments and you're dealing with collection on a judgment, there's a lot of what ifs in there and there's a lot of gray areas. So I can't guarantee anything, but I can guarantee you that we are not gonna let people off. We're going to go after them and with, with whatever measures we can. So you have, I, I can speak on behalf of the board on this, that we're all in agreement that we're not gonna let these people um, get away with, with this without answering for it. Absolutely, good point. And I hope everyone heard that. All right, so what are the consequences of not doing the rate increase? It's pretty simple. If Western Hills Water District cannot pay Kern County, there is a great possibility that water service will be interrupted temporarily or terminated. If Western Hills Water District is unable to provide clean drinking water to DG, property values will certainly go down and the community would not be viable to live in. Obviously, water is a requirement. Uh, the third bullet point here, the water district would never, would never reach solvency and thus always be dependent on a developer financially. However, that would, might not even matter if none of us are here. <laughs> Correct. Oh, geez. Well, I have a problem here with my contracts that I included, unforeseen. Let me uh, try to reload. There we go. All right, everyone can still see that? Yep. Great. So uh, just to hit back on uh, the prior bullet points about the Kern County Western Hills contract and the fact that service could be interrupted. I wanted to illustrate that, in fact, we've already had to talk to them about this, as, as one could imagine, and uh, show you the contract itself. Again, this will be available at the end of the presentation uh, and will be available on the website. This is Article 5, page 7. I'm just going to read the highlighted portion out loud. In the event of any default by Western Hills in the payment of any money required to be paid to the agency here under, that's KCWA, or in any other obligations under this agreement, the agency in its discretion may suspend delivery of water to Western Hills during the period when Western Hills is delinquent in its payment. That can't be any more clear. They can simply shut off water. That is the reality of the situation. Now, my next slide wait, is going to show wait, you. Wait, 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 go back because it's important. Um, you got to finish this. So it's delinquent in payment for obligations provided that, and so there's a number one here. The agency, which is Kern, has given Western Hills not less than four months prior written, it, written notice of any such default. Well, I was going to get to that on my next slide. Well, I know, but have them read that because this is important that this is actually in the agreement. And now your next slide is going to explain why that's so important. Yes. So the next slide is a letter from KCWA to Western Hills Water District, April 9, 2020. It's outlining, 
outlining the defaults that have already occurred in 2019 and 2020. And if you look at the dates, 2019 is quite a bit behind April 9th, as is January 2020, about four months. Uh, so effectively, they've provided said written notice of those defaults. Um, obviously, the if you read this letter, which is also available at the end of the presentation, uh, you can see there was a partial payment on July 1, 2019, but then there was zero payment on January 2020. Let me read the paragraph here that, that uh, demonstrates that they actually are aware of what's going on. Pursuant to your conversations with Lauren Bauer of my staff, that's KCWA, on January 16, 2020 and February 2020, it has come to our attention that World International has not provided funding to Western Hills. Since World International is a major funding source for Western Hills financial obligations, it is our understanding that the Western Hills Board of Directors was unable to approve payment to the agency, KCWA, at its February 19th, 2020 meeting. Therefore, Western Hills is in default of payment. That's as of April 9, 2020. We are here in January 2020, February 2021, excuse me, we still have running water. By all measures, they could have shut our water off in August of August last year. 9th, August 9th of last year. Yes. Um, and all, whether, it, whether it be COVID, whether it be COVID or just the kindness and generosity, who knows? But we're living on borrowed time and that's the seriousness of it. That's for sure. Right, uh, moving along. What is our forward looking plan? So again, a rate increase is going to need to be approved and put in place to get us to break even. We need to get to break even so we can pay forward bills. In this regard, there are pros and cons, of course. We prop ourselves up as a community since current developer owner will not. We maintain solvency thanks to our community contributions. We don't need a developer to subsidize the district anymore and we can be self-sustaining. That's all great stuff. I really like that. I actually really like that idea in the first place. And I'm sure that was the original vision for Diablo Grande. Uh, the cons are we don't fund ourselves for capital expenditures like I explained earlier, which means we're a little bit vulnerable if equipment failures start happening or somehow an earthquake, I don't know if we have earthquake insurance or not, but let's just say something fails, there may not be enough money in the bank to repair that. There may be some downtime or something. Um, so we need to find a solution to that still. I would also like to point out, and Matt, you probably can talk about this too, but California uh, regularly releases new requirements for water districts pretty much yearly as far to my understanding. And we have to pay to come up to speed on those things, just like you would building code if you were building a home. Uh, or if you're installing, uh, let's say, for example, I had to have my hot water heater reinstall, uh, installed, uh, replaced last year. My house wasn't built to 2019 code. It was built in 2008. I didn't have a pan underneath my hot water heater. So I had to pay to add a pan and have it installed with a drain. And, you know, that's several hundred dollars. I had to come up with that just as the water district has to come up with that sort of stuff to stay in compliance. Meanwhile, we as a community will continue to hope that AC will perform as they're obligated. I won't say anything more on that. Now, in addition to this plan, uh, we can do a few other things. We can explore merging with another water entity. Uh, we have no idea what that looks like. It's a possible option. We have no idea if it's possible, but it's an option. Um, any merger with another comp with another water entity, of course, is going to mean that we as a community still have to pay 100% of the costs of water delivery to our homes. There's no way that another district is, or another entity is going to subsidize Diablo Grande in any way. Uh, and again, uh, this is sort of a Hail Mary last, last resort option, you know, if we have to come down to it. Hopefully we don't need to do this, but it's possible. So I want to interject here a little bit. Um, so way back, um, time flies, um, I was asked by someone in the community um, <laughs> if 
if I had a plan B. And I quickly said, no, there's no plan B. Well, I laid awake thinking there's got to be a plan B. Well, I can tell you guys that there's a, a plan B and a plan C now um, that we're going to be looking into. And we should be able to bring a lot of that information to the community next month, I think after the rates, um, if not March, definitely April. But we are looking at a couple different things and Chris just alluded to two of them. And that is by raising rates, we're putting ourselves in a, in a, in a place where um, we will be able to pay current bills. The only negative side is we don't have infrastructure money. So there are several things that the board will be discussing in the next several weeks where we might be able to dig ourselves out of this hole and pay off some debt and do some things. And we're working on those things right now. And then there's also this possible merger with another water entity as a last resort. So we've gone from back in November-ish, September, October-ish, um, from, hey, there's no plan B, you know, Angels Crossing is the only way, to now there is some options. And we have been able to put our heads together. And I don't want people leaving this meeting thinking, there's no, there, you know, water's going to get shut off or something. No, there are some, some really good ideas and plans that all of us as board members are working on. And everybody is working every day on these issues. And so we should have more, more information and have a little more fleshed out um, ideas. But no matter what whether it be our Western Hills Water District Plan A or our Western Hills Water District Plan B, whatever we decide to go with, no matter what, there has to be rate increases because whether we are gonna to try to survive on our own or whether we're gonna to have to merge, either one of those, we must as a community be able to pay our water and sewer rates ourselves and not be solely relying on a developer, specifically in this situation, a developer that hasn't even paid their trash bill or their TID bill. And as I made mention, we had to move the entire 911 operating system out of the clubhouse because they didn't pay their bill. So, you know, we can't rely on them at this juncture. And so as a community, we have to start kind of turning the page and really looking at us surviving and we as a community surviving together. And so I just encourage everyone as you're getting this information, maybe you've already known this information, maybe it's the first time you're getting this information. I don't want you to be panic stricken because there are options for us to move. And I'm hopeful on both options, but both options re require us to raise rates. And so next month, we're going to have those numbers, I'm hoping. I, I really am. I'm, I'm supposed to be getting some real tangible numbers by the end of this month. And we will have that for you guys next month. So I just want you to know, because this is a lot of bad news. There's a lot of like, ugh. And um, I just don't want you to walk away from this meeting feeling hopeless, because I'm not feeling hopeless. I, 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 I'm sitting here with kind of a stern look because it's it, there's a lot riding on the board of directors right now and we're all working overtime i can tell you everybody is working constant absolutely and um nobody is not working on this board and it's all voluntary but we're all working and we're working to save our homes to save your home and we're just asking in return that the focus doesn't necessarily if I can just say that we can be angry with world and we can be angry with Angels Crossing, sure, reasonable. But at the same time, we have to be able to say, but what are we gonna do to survive? And what are we going to do to ensure that water continues to flow so our home values stay where they need to be at and we can continue to function? 
And I do, I am very optimistic that we can do this, um, but it's gonna take the rate increase. And so I just ask that everybody be open to that as we move forward. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So um, that's pretty much the end of the informational presentation, but I did write up a few Q and A's. Uh, and again, I apologize. I know it's kind of a text wall here uh, for everyone, but I hope you can read it. I'll go ahead and read it myself. What's this about World International running the Western Hills Water District Board for years? Uh, it's an often asked question, I think, amongst the community members. Uh, you know, the water board hasn't necessarily been paid attention to by community members as closely as as uh, as of late. And so uh, effectively, it's it's just been run by the developer who had held a board majority for a long time. I'll go ahead and read the actual answer that David would probably like me to stay on script about. Western Hills Water District is what is known as a landowner voting district. Instead of one person, one vote, each landowner holds a number of votes equal to the number of dollars in assessed land values. That's land only, not the house, not the buildings, land only, as dictated by the county. For example, if the lot in which your house is located is assessed at $100,000, again, that's just the land, then you have 100,000 votes. As discussed next in question two, because World did have a significant majority of the outstanding votes as compared to individual landowners in the district, they were able to retain a majority on the board because very few residents declared themselves candidates for elections or vacancies. That's just a matter of fact. There just hasn't been a lot of interest in the water district. I'm guilty of that for the first three, almost three years that I lived here. I don't think I attended one water board meeting. Uh, I just thought everything was hunky dory, just flowing along. Every, you know, no pun intended. Everything was good. I mean, I pay my property taxes, I pay my Melarus, um, I pay my water bills. I figured everything was fine. Turns out it wasn't. All right, here's an even longer one. Why hasn't there been a Western Hills Water District Board of Directors election in years? In every year for which there was a director seat up for election, the water district conducted the election process in accordance with state law, beginning at least in at least 2011 and every odd number year since that date, the water, Western Hills Water District has stated, started the election process in accordance with the elections code. However, no elections are needed to be conducted when the number of candidates equals the same number of director positions up for election, because there's only one candidate to vote for that person is going to get voted in no matter what. For example, if there are two director positions and only two people declare the candidacy, there is no election held. Yada, yada, yada. This occurred in 2011 and 2013 when an election actually was conducted. Uh, I am guilty of thinking there was an election before, uh, after 2013. There has not been. Um, recently, accusations have been made that the Western Hills Water District must hold elections when a director resigns the position prior to the date the seat is up for election. So if the seat was up in November and I and I resigned in April, some people were saying that there must be an election. There cannot be any other way. But actually, this is false. When a vacancy occurs prior to the expiration of the term, except for specific circumstances which haven't occurred, the board is authorized by law, and in fact our own bylaws, to either fill the vacancy by appointment filled by a vote of the board or call for a special election. To date, such a vacancy has always been filled by appointment with the board as opposed to holding a special election. And there's a very good reason for that. As a landowner voting district, Western Hills Water District is required to conduct its own elections. There is no county assistance. This is a lot of work and I'm sure Matt would be happy to explain a little bit more about it, but appointment instead of calling for an election saves the district tens of thousands of dollars for that year. So it's a very important point. It's not like we've had cash to just roll out for elections every year either. So, you know, in a way, I think appointments have done this district a, both a disservice and a service in the past, um, in particular lately, a service. Um, Matt, is there anything you want to add to that? Nope, because um, 
if you want to have a, an election, then you have to have a developer paying the money as a subsidy to afford the election. So it, it, it's, it's irony, I guess, that um, a developer wants us to have another election, but doesn't want to pay for the election. They think we should pay for the election, but actually it's them that pay for it because they cover the subsidy. So if right. we don't have enough money to put water into your house, how in the world are we going to spend $20,000 on an election? Exactly. I mean, it just doesn't, uh, it's just the irony is ridiculous. <laughs> it doesn't escape us, no. All right, number three. What happens to the money I pay every month to Western Hills Water District? Well, currently, you know, uh, based on the fact that the rates need to go up, that the, the money you pay every month isn't enough for the district. Um, and we have to continue to subsidize operational costs on, on our own. Uh, but the short answer is customer payments are currently being used to fund operations and keep water service running. That means paying our employees, paying for whatever tests need to be done or procedures need to be accomplished in order to get treated water in order to get raw water up and treated water down to your homes and my home. The bills that are outstanding with with uh, sorry I put KWCA but the bills that are outstanding with KCWA and the city of Patterson are simply outstanding. Why are these bills piling up? Western Hills Water District facilities must run and bills piling up are a symptom of an underfunded district, plain and simple. If the district was being funded per the master agreement AAR, these bills would be paid. Absolutely. And as an analogy, I just put in, you know, if you were at, if you're at home and you, and you find out you get laid off, what, what are you gonna default on first? Are you gonna stop buying groceries? No, you need daily operational groceries in order to feed your family, but you might put off the mortgage payment for a few months uh, you may even put off other bills for a few months in order to continue to buy water and food. That's those are the oper the necessary operations that we're funding right now. Um, again, we choose to fund immediate operations rather than debts, which can be settled later. And that's where the fifty thousand you see us every single month saying we need to fund fifty thousand dollars. We're we're running a fifty thousand dollar deficit. Right. We, we don't have the money to pay our, our workers and, and everything that goes into bringing the water up the hill through the three pumping stations and getting it up to the, to the tanks and having it go through the treatment and then getting it to your homes. So those, those are our necessity. That is what we have to pay first. And to make that happen, there's we're at a fit we're lost by 50,000 so we bring in the 50,000 but even bringing in that 50,000 doesn't pay all the debts because you see the sewer bill is still needing to be paid you see Kern still needing to be paid those funds are not being paid because we still don't have enough money right we're running at a deficit operationally and we're running at a deficit bill payingly <laughs> correct uh which is terrible so uh, that's why things are so dire Correct. Thank you, Matt. Uh, number five, this one's probably kind of boring, but I thought it might be interesting for those who are curious. Um, what does it mean to be allocated water from the state? So on the right side of the screen, I have the latest uh, notice to state water project contractors. That would be somebody like Kern County uh, from the state water project or the Department of Water Resources, I'm sorry stating exactly the allocation as it stands right now for 2021, which is 10%. They go on to provide a table of, of uh, various allocation amounts for various purposes. I'll let you read that. It's also available uh, on, the, on the California DWP website, which I've linked to at the end of the presentation. But effectively, the State Water Project allocates a percentage of requested water from all state water contractors. That would be play, uh, entities like KWC, KCWA, uh, and the current allocation is set to 10%. It's down from 15%. We can only hope that it goes up if there's enough water available, surface water or reservoir water available later on in the year, but Start we all know that's probably kind of a long shot. 
start praying for rain. Yeah, we should get some tomorrow. Um, at 10%, again, we will receive 800 of our 8,000 allocated acre feet. And we still have to pay for the entire 8,000 for the year. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the last question is about water banking. I've heard this question a lot and I had to do a little research on it myself. I'm still keeping it pretty high level and I would appreciate any input from uh, Matt or David on this, but um, basically we have an agreement with Kern County to bank water in excess of the actual water that we pump up the hill. So if we only use 600 of our allotted 800 acre feet uh, in 2021, then we would bank 200 acre feet back to KCWA which uh, is not a physical transaction. We're not actually moving the water. It's just banked with them uh, for future use. Uh, this water is credited to us and uh, we can buy it back later. It's also um, something that we definitely rely on in a drought year where we might get a 0% allocation from the state. Um, but it does, it, even though it can be purchased back later, it's not purchased at face value. It's purchased at some exponentially higher number per acre feet. I don't even have any idea what that number is, but uh, the water banking agreement is also included at the end of the presentation. So again, banking is not a physical transaction. We're not moving the water. It's simply noted on the account and credited. And please correct me if I'm wrong on that, David or Matt. No, that is correct. All right. Lastly, I felt it pertinent to put a thank you in here. I know it's kind of a rough presentation and I just hope everybody's hung on long enough uh, and uh, not falling asleep yet, but uh, we really do hope that, that you find this helpful. Uh, we really are taking transparency and disseminating information to you, the public, uh, very seriously. I mean, we can't be more serious than we're being right now, in my opinion. And as Matt alluded to earlier, I just wanted to say we're, you know, in the coming weeks and months, um, especially in March, there's gonna be a lot more information. Uh, there will be more meetings, there'll be more documents uh, and there will be movement. Uh, we're not gonna sit stagnant and just let things happen around here. You know, we're taking charge of the situation. And just like you, uh, like I said earlier, it almost gets me a little emotional to think about what would happen up here if we didn't have water, I mean, I just, I can't even imagine having to leave my home for that, you know? Um, I don't even know what that would mean financially for me. It would be ridiculous. So we're working and very hard, tooth and nail, to get this situation rectified, like we alluded to earlier. Um, I just hope that the community can come together and understand that we've been neglected for a great long time and it's, it's, it's we're being called upon now to take care of this problem because the district simply doesn't have the money to continue to go along like this with, with no developer subsidy. It just does not. Um, and it certainly doesn't make enough money uh, from us, the ratepayers, to continue either at, in its current state. Uh, so I'd just like to wrap it up, say, you know, we really appreciate your time. I know it's been a long presentation again, and I'll, uh, I'll just show the final slide here, which has the references uh, it has my email address. If you want to write that down or copy it down or send me an email right now, just so that you have it, um, you can feel free to do that. It's chrisblessingwhwd at gmail.com. Uh, all of these documents that I've referenced in this presentation are linked from this presentation. And this presentation is a Google Slides presentation. Uh, I will publish it publicly. I'll publish it on the website as a PDF. And uh, you'll be able to go through here, click all these links and download all these documents for yourself um, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, this is how we're gonna continue to do it. We'll provide references. We're not gonna be just throwing information at you all willy nilly. It's gonna always be documented and um, not subjective. It'll always be objective. That's a very important fact. So again, thank you very much. Uh, I will, uh, stop sharing my screen here, Matt, and hand the meeting back to you. All right. Well, Chris, once again, thank you so much for an amazing presentation. I know you've worked hard, and um, thank you. Um, and for the community, um, Chris and Zechariah are continuing to build out the new website, and uh, I expect that up and running tomorrow. 
<laughs> just kidding. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. You may be the president, but no, you're right. Uh, as soon as we oh, can. Come right? on. As come soon on. as we can. Uh, you know uh, you guys want to stay up all night and drink coffee and make it happen. I really wanted to make this presentation. Uh, now that I've given it, I'm released from its duty so I can finally move on with Zach to get to the point where we can have a functioning modern website, which is coming soon. Yeah, uh, there's is. just a bit of transition to go through between our current provider and the next provider. And, and of course, some development to do to actually build the site, but guys, we're, we're highly you capable. Doing it. You guys are doing it. We You're, got it. We got happen. it. March is going to be a crazy month. So I'm kind of not thinking it's going to happen in March either, but, but um, possible. It, oh, I, I set the bar medium. All right. Okay? All right. I'm all right. On this one, all right. It can go either way. Um, right. We better have our Q and A about this. Yeah, let's let's get questions um, up um, for. I'm sure there's probably a few or at least. We got one from a fond of Houston. Let's, let's start looking for hands. All right, we got we got Fonda first, and then Carmen, and then Don. So Fonda, I'm going to unmute you, and you can feel free to ask your question. Just get, we'll have to give him a moment. Mm -hmm. um, All it, right, Fonda, you're unmuted. Needs, Go right ahead. To unmute Zachariah too. He's not, oh. it, he needs to get a- um, I got him, I got him. All right, cool. Is all of our board members undone? I'm uh, so disappointed. I wanted to be involved in all that fun banter. <laughs> I was just silent for all them. I just sit back and watch. That's okay, right. can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Please oh, go okay. right ahead. Thank you. Okay, so is this video going to be, this recording going to be available later for, to review? Yes. Okay. So now I got a question about the 50000 you saying that you guys keep rolling over each month. Where's the, if if you have no money, where's that 50000 coming from? They're the refinanced um, um, bonds, bond money. And that money is allocated for capital improvements only. However, because we are in such a dire situation and we could not survive, we are borrowing from that money that we would normally use for capital improvements just to survive. And we're being forced to do that because we have a developer that's refusing to pay their contractual obligations. Okay, so now about the rate study. Who who's doing the rate study? Uh, C. Um, oh gosh, I knew you're gonna ask. I knew somebody was gonna ask that question. It's, is that uh, the C P U C? It is um, H F N H. Um, the private company. Consultants <laughs> LLC. Oh, and consult. we hired them back in August to. Um, conduct the rate study. So when will that be available? You said at the end of this month? So in February, um, I am hoping to have the rate study completed and then it'll be given out and we will be talking about that in our March meeting. If all goes well and I can't, you know, anything can happen. Um, we, we, again, like I stated, because the 700,000 budgeted by Angels Crossing had to be removed because they're not paying. We now have to redo all the anal it just there's a lot involved with all of that. We have to take all of that in consideration and hopefully I'll have that rate study by the end of February. Hopefully. Don't so I mean, are you gonna present it with plan A B or C for March? So yeah. the first, yeah, the first thing we will do is we have to discuss the rate study um, with the community and we will, um, my plan of action, if, if, and this again is hypothetical because we don't have a rate study yet, but if all goes as planned, what I want to do is in our first board meeting in March, um, give you guys the rate study and explain where the rates are at, what the rate increase would be discuss it to nauseam. Then um, we will also have um, the rate study folks who did it be there in that meeting and they will communicate it with you as well, probably in a PowerPoint presentation as well. 
Then we're going to give the community about a week to digest that. And then we're, we're going to come back a week later. And what I'm thinking is having like a town meeting, a town hall kind of meeting where you guys have had a whole week to digest the information. We'll have the rate study posted on the website. You guys can download it and really look at it. We'll come back then the second or well, I think we're in a second week for the second week of March, I think is our meeting. And then the third week would be the town meeting. And then the fourth week of March, um, it would become a vote of the board, unless there's another massive question that would come up that would throw us off track that we would need to, to look into. So March is going to be divided probably into three meetings is what I'm looking at. The first one will be at our normal date, which I believe is March 10th. And then on March 17th, we'll come back with a town hall. And then whatever the next one is, the 24th, I think, maybe, I don't know, but the next week would be the vote. And what we would do is we would vote up or down on whether we're going to raise the rates. And then that kicks in a whole process system. Um, the rates would actually not go up for probably about 90 days because there's a whole process that goes, that we go through. So will you guys be presenting the different rates? So if you merge with another water entity, is that going to be a calculated rate? And then if you don't, is that going to be a calculated rate no. so that we see the variance? Yeah, so no. Um, if, if we were to go with our plan A and try to hold um, Western Hills Water District steady, and continue to move forward as our own entity, which is again, our plan A, um, these rates by raising them will pay the, the, the difference in the subsidy that's being should be being paid by a developer. And we would then be able to make our payments. But as the presentation showed, even though we're being able to now make our payments and we wouldn't have to borrow 50,000 every month from the um, refinance bond money, we still have an issue if, God forbid, something were to happen to our infrastructure and we needed to have an infrastructure. Um, exactly. So why not merge or try to look at a merger? Okay. So, well, I am. Um, so, but even if with a merger, I can tell you if we did a merger, these rates will still apply because these rates cover our 8,000 acre foot. Because when you merge, you're mer merging that 8,000 acre foot. And if you merge with another um, entity, they're going to expect you to pay for your 8,000 acre feet. So no matter what, this rate raise or rate hike will cover that no matter which route we go. And it will hold us through that. Hey guys, I just want to interject. It's been about five minutes and I know it's a lot of information from the presentation. Okay. So I feel like five minutes is a pretty good uh, cushion yeah. for questions, if that's all right. Yep. That's fine, but uh, I still have questions. <laughs> okay, Fonda, do you mind um, kind of going to the back of the line? You can lower your hand and then yeah, re-raise sure. it. Uh, all right, uh, great. Fonda, I'm making a note of your name, Fonda, and let's come back to you after we get a few others, because other people might ask some of your questions. Well, yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm just going to contact my state representative, because I got some questions. Okay, that's fine. Thank all right, you. Yeah. I'll lower my hand. Thank you. All right, the next person up is Carmen. I will unmute Carmen. Hey, thank you. Sure. Um, Chris, so um, and congratulations about your presentation. I, I think it was very, very good, let me tell you. Thank you. Accurate, so it was nice. So my question is this, um, you answered most of my, my first question is already answered, but now I have another one. So basically is, um, are you guys have any plan to use refinance bond proceeds to pay their Kern County or the sewer uh, bill for the city of Patterson to avoid any possible legal actions that will cost more money to the district? I can't speak on that, but I'm sure Matt can. Uh, I have an opinion on it, but uh, Matt? Yeah, um, as you know, Carmen, that, that money can only be used for um, um, capital improvements and for our survival. Um, so survival is not necessarily paying the money that Angels Crossing owes to Kern. 
um, it would be um, for our survival to make sure water flows to the people's homes that live up here. That would be my, my uh, we need to keep that money for doing what we need to do to keep water flowing to homes. Well, the water bill, it's survival. Do you think that they can um, stop sending water because we don't pay the, the water bill to Kern County? Right, so that would be Kern County suing Angels Crossing um, for the breach of contract as well. So I, I would, um, you know, I would just, that money is owed by Angels Crossing as per their, um, <laughs> them, them buying this from World International, they agreed to pay that. So when they agreed to pay that money, that became their debt. But West Tejiwara District, the agreement uh, to purchase the water is between West Tejiwara District and Kern County, correct? Wait, say that one more time, sorry. The uh, agreement to purchase the water, it's between West Tejiwara District and Kern County, not correct. crossings or any other party. And so that's why we would want to raise the rates so we can continue to move forward paying Kern County like we're supposed to be doing since we don't have a developer paying the money. But as far as the back owed money that was agreed upon in the assignment assumptions, uh, or not assignment assumption, but the, um, the phase one agreement master plan. And when they took ownership from World International, they agreed to pay that. Yeah. So that's well, that one, I, them. I get it, I mean, so I understand that, but you know that for, in, uh, to increase the water rates, it will take a long time. It's not up for tomorrow, one or two months. So it will take a lot of time. So just, are we running out of time um, in which West City Water District is going to lose the water from Kern County? I think that we're running out of time because as I said, just in order for the resident to start paying a new rate, it will take time. It's not in one, two months, or even probably three months. Right, and and, and, so, and, that, and the reason we're in that situation is your old boss from World International left us in this predicament. And it also is Angels Crossing not paying their fiduciary and contractual obligations. So. We're in this mess because of World International not paying their bills for over a year and Angels Crossing now almost a year not paying their bills. So I, I understand that, that's, but that's that, that will probably work itself out in the legal system, but for now we have to survive. And that's what we're going to start doing. I, I understand. Past is past, whatever happened, happened. But the point is right now we say he wanted this thing has this problem up to date, right? And we're running out of time. What is the, the plan to pay or at least to show to the current county or probably the city of Patterson the intentions to um, cure these balances, at least to pay something to them? What well, the West Tech, what is the result, the legal issues against developers or against whatever it happened? Okay. Right. Well, well, what I happened in the past? Past. Now we have the problem. Right, but that's what the presentation was about. We're starting to share with the community what the plan is, and the plan has to roll itself out. And as you said, it doesn't just happen overnight. Um, it's a process, and the process is we're starting to communicate why we're in this situation. Next month, we're going to be talking about the rate increase, and then we'll move on to the next steps and phases as they unfold. Um, and we're not going to sit here in this meeting and explain all of our trajectory and our um, what everything is going to be and how it's all going to lay itself out. I mean, well, that's a lot of unknowns. Okay, so we are. Do you think that we are safe in the time? Um, I'm sorry. Do you think that we are safe in the time between the rate increase and Kern County or the city of Patterson to start any legal action? against West Tejiwara District because they haven't been paid their bills? Do you think that we'll say that period? Of time? Once again, I think the legal action will be against Angels Crossing. If it hasn't already begun, it probably will soon. Uh, uh, that one, I don't know because uh, I'm not an attorney and I don't know right. that, but it's more West Tejiwara right. District in the first place. Because right, but we might West know. Uh, okay, so let's go on to the next question. All right, hang on. Um, 
Thank you, Carmen. Um, no you problem. can feel free to raise your hand again if you want to ask another question uh, afterwards, okay? Uh, the next person is Don Williams, I believe. Hey, Don. Uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you go. You should be hey. good to go. Okay. Uh, first, I want to tell you how much I appreciate this transparency. It's, it's answering so many questions and Chris, thank you for that presentation. That my was, pleasure, my pleasure. It was phenomenal. I've got two questions and I'm, I'm not sure you'll be able to answer one of them. But the, the first question is, has, has Angels Crossing, I know they haven't paid anything, have they, has there been a discussion with them? Has there been any leeway at all? Mr. Matt? <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, you're the president. <laughs> oh, now you're going to play that card. <laughs> this is why they pay you the big bucks, Matt. Oh, yeah. right. oh man. Um, uh, there has been um, no communications with Angels Crossing on them paying their fiduciary contractual obligations. Um, it's like a broken record. I uh you know the money's coming this month the money's coming that month i mean remember the letter they sent the community back in november um the the what was it the clubhouse was going to be renovated by such and such date and yeah. the golf course was going to be open in march well yeah that's not happening so everything just keeps pushing and there's always the money's coming next month and um i don't know the, you know i hope that the money comes. Me I, too. I, Me too. I, I do. And as soon as the money comes and they begin to pay their fiduciary and contractual obligations, I will, I will be the first one to stand up and say, let's get started. Um, but at this juncture, nine, 10 months into it, it's show me the money, show me the money, show me the money. And talk is cheap. Um, you know, we, we just showed you the letter that they sent and said they were going to start making payments 30 days into their buying of this place. Well, we're almost, you know what, nine, 10 months into it and they haven't paid anything. So no, there is nothing from Angels Crossing as far as paying their bills. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, second question, and you may, not, you may not have the answer, you may not be able to answer it yet, Matt, but I'm just understand based on the presentation, we're gonna have to raise the rates. Uh, do you have, any inkling of an idea how much the rates may have to go up? Well, um, let's, let's just start it with this. Right now, the water base rate is um, 100, 69 cents. $100.69. Right. That's the base water. 161.66. 161.66. 166. No, 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 that includes that uh, sewage. No, oh, that, okay. that's, that's sewage. Um, so the base water is one hundred dollars and sixty nine cents. Um, when we did this, when we did this water rate study back in August, there was seven hundred thousand dollars coming from Angels Crossing because we all were believing for that. Assumed it's not like it actually got paid. That was just oh, assumed. it never got like, paid. But right. we were assuming because that's what they said they wanted their budget to be for water. Right. So we, we took them at their word for that. So we included that in there. And I can tell you the, the water rate that popped up. Um, and if we're looking at the 21, 22 year, it's, it's $200. So that's only a $100 increase. Now I'm having everything re redone and re fashioned and we'll see where that number comes out. Um, but it'll be somewhere probably in that vicinity. Um, maybe a few, uh, maybe a little bit more, but it'll be a little north of that. Yes. So yes, to but, but probably not much. I mean, but more, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to put a number on it. I can speak to you about this number because this literally was projected. Um, so we're looking at about a hundred dollars extra on your bill. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. You got it, Don. Thank you for the good questions. All right, next we have uh, SAC Attorney General Investor or SAC AGINV. I will go ahead and unmute you.
There you go. You're good to go. Thank you, Mr. Blessing. Yes. Uh, I appreciate your presentation today. Thank you. Um, I did pick up on a couple of things that were concerning to me. Fair enough. The original Diablo Grande plan some 20 years ago planned for development. And the 8,000 acre feet was to accommodate the development Correct. of water. Raising rates is not a sustainable way out of this. There has to be some communication. I'm hearing a lot of a lot of animosity and a lot of anger and a lot of personal personal anger. And and I understand that you live there. But you have to moderate and mediate in order to work things out here. Without developing, your community cannot sustain those water costs. That's the simple numbers. So who do you put the blame on for developing? What, who I'm, I'm not putting the blame, and I think that's what you're missing. No, no, no. I think, you have to have I think that if you're, you haven't you're 100 had 100 right in your statement. No, you're 100 percent right in your statement. I'm agreeing with you. Have Develop you had a sit down with Kern? The current board. Um, Kern Kern has been talked to, and basically, um, until payment is made, we're sort of um, they they made it abundantly clear. There's no more talk. It's make the payment, uh, uh, and that has been discussed. Have you had a sit down with uh, City of Patterson? We are the in current the, board, not one not, board member. The, I'm talking a majority of the board. Have you had a meeting? Have you invited well, you them up? the majority of the board having a, a meeting or else it would be a public meeting. You uh, can make it a yes, public meeting and go into closed session on negotiations. There are members of our board having discussions, yes. So there are current discussions. Have you had a sit down meeting with Angels Crossing? Because if you, if, if we can't, if your community cannot be objective and try to work out an objective, maybe call in a facilitator or something. So this is going bad fast. Um, I'm not sure how it's going bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm the not rate sure. increase is uh, a sustainable I number. Uh, I don't know why it's unsustainable, but it would be sustainable and it's not outrageous. It's not like we're talking about $1,000 a month here. Um, and frankly, it seems to be the only way we get out of this problem that we're in currently. And let's not forget about the other benefit of detaching the district from any future development. Uh, so I, I, I'm not quite have, sure. Have you done the numbers on that, sir? So, so just, just so you understand, Angels Crossing signed a contract. Um, it would be like you signing a contract to buy a house and then you don't like the amount your mortgage payment is. So you say, I'm not paying anything else until you rene renegotiate that number to a liking, a number I like. Um, I think your house would be foreclosed on probably within about three to six months um, with that attitude. So this isn't about sitting down and negotiating. Were the Western this, this, Hills, this about, Hills about an, an at the time of that contract? Agreement. This is about a contractual agreement that Angels Crossing entered into with World International. And when they bought this place for $100,000 and assumed all of the debt, they assumed the debt and they assumed the agreement that they would pay the subsidy. You can't then say, I want to now renegotiate that. I mean, you can say it, but that doesn't necessarily work, especially when the water district had its survival is based on you paying that contractual obligation. So I understand, I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, your, your, your argument is kind of an apple and orange situation for us here with a contract. Negotiation in a time where according to your own statement, it may be COVID or the grace of, of their kindness that Kern has not cut off water to your community mm -hmm. is the prudent thing to do.
Wait, if, it, I'm sorry. She's saying, she's saying that we need to negotiate with Kern. I'm saying you need to have sit down this not okay. So try let, and work this out. So let me ask you a question. People have water. So let me ask you a question. You own a $3 million home and you sell that $3 million home to an organization that says they'll pay you. And they then tell you after you guys sign all the documentation, okay, we're not gonna pay you. We wanna renegotiate. We don't think 3 million is what we really wanna pay you for your house. You're telling me that you're gonna sit down and negotiate with that or- Absolutely. I'm telling you that when I look at attorney's fees- of contract. <laughs> when I look at attorney's fees and what the consequences are, people settle every day of the week. You right. You have to be open to negotiation. Okay, thank you. I, I, I'll take that under advisement. Thank All you. All right. <laughs> um, SAC AG, INV, do you have any further questions about the presentation? No, I just, I, I really hope that you can set aside animosity and people can get together and actually work on a solution because Nobody's no stopping them from you know, creating a meeting oh, and coming no down. There's no animosity and... here. There's no animosity. They're, We're just trying to survive. <laughs> there, 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 there's um, a frustration that someone came here and bought all of this land for $100,000. That's less than any of us in this community owe for our houses. And then they actually agreed to pay and develop, and they're doing nothing. Okay, I'm allowed to be frustrated. Now, as far as hating people, um, refusing to talk to people, hey, I've sat down with Jen Miller. I've sat down with um, um, Mike Walker, or I didn't sit down, I talked to him down at the, the canal. Um, I've, I've, I've talked with Seth on the phone. I've talked to these individuals. I've, I've, I've interviewed Mr. Mosley several times. There's no animosity whatsoever. What there is is it's, it's called business. You buy a, a land for $100,000 and you agree to pay the subsidy. You don't destroy the community and risk people's homes and the value of their homes. You start paying your bill. And when you're paying your bill, then you have a seat at the table to start discussing, hey, what can we do better? What can we do this? Look, we're changing the water district around. I've got five people on here doing tons of stuff to improve, to make changes. We're doing what we need to do. But the bottom line is, is Angels Crossing came here. They haven't paid their trash bill. The HOA now has to pay that, which means the can, home. Can you actually provide proof of that? Because I've heard a lot of accusations. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to post it can on the post website. We'll be up? happy to post it on the website. Yeah. I've also worked with the 911 operating system the fire department, the sheriff, they were all up here last week because Angels Crossing doesn't even have an account with TID to pay their bills. And when World's bills stop being paid, they, the county of Stanislaus, has been paying the bill. And finally, they're trying to move this equipment out of the building and get it set up so they can pay it in full from now on. And luckily, I was able to negotiate with them because that fifty to seventy thousand was going to fall on the homeowners association, and I work with those folks to where they're going to make an emergency payment from the budget of the county to pay for that. So, whoever you are, you have no clue what you're talking about right now because we're busting our butts up here to survive and to keep our homes afloat while Angels Crossing wants to stay there, the owner here, but they're not paying their bills. That is an absolute fact. And if you'd like me to post stuff, we'll post it. What I'd like you to do is work in the best interest of we the are. community that you the have. Community. We're for. working in the best and interest of the community. That requires you to lose some of that anger. Because I think we need to move on to the next question. Yeah, next yeah, question. I, I think this next, person has expended yeah. enough next of the community. Next time. person. Next. All right. Mr. Gary Rojas, I will unmute you. There you go, sir. Great. Good evening, everybody. I first of all, I just want to say I 
I'm very happy with your preparation, all of you, uh, and your transparency for this meeting. Um, as tough it was to swallow seeing some of those uh, slides, you know, I get it. And um, I, for one, just being a resident here, um, I, I guess speaking for myself, I back the increase. I don't want to see our community suffer. And to put that control into the community as homeowners uh, to help um, take that away from the developer, I'm all for it. Um, the thing too, I have, I just want to bring up, I also like the direction our HOA is going to, and I know we're two separate entities, but if we're looking at ways to cut costs and, and help the bottom line of our community, I really think it might be valuable that maybe we do work together between the two and look at cost savings to see where we can do to um, alleviate maybe some of the expenses that are gonna help with some of these future increases we might be seeing. Absolutely. Um, that, that's one thing. And then, you know, the other thing I have a question about, and, and you know, I've, I've really never been involved on these calls until really COVID um, kicked in. Just Me too, Gary. Just because of the fact that, you know, my business that I work in, my career, I am now working from home and I'm doing Zoom meetings every day. So it's, it's, it's beneficial. It's, 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 it's easy for me now to, to attend these meetings. And I thank you for having them later in the day. Um, we have a GM, I believe, at our water district. Um, I don't know his role. I don't know what his involvement is. Now, you guys on the board, from what I see from an outsider looking in, you guys are working tirelessly. You guys are working for free. I Help me understand what the involvement is of the GM for the water district, and what is he responsible for when it comes to the bottom line of the water district? That's a great question, Gary. And Thank you. I'm going to let um, um, Linda, if you want to take this one, that would be great. Yeah, um, there is actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes that um, make sure that when you walk over and you turn your tap on, that water actually comes out. And that is a lot of what Jerry does. Um, he does a lot of that. Of course, you're not going to see it because you're not supposed to see it. That's not what's supposed to happen. So, and not only that, um, so there's repairs, there's treatment of that water, there's all of these things that go on behind the scenes. And there's also reports to the state because the state monitors to make sure that we are actually providing clean water to um, the uh, residents. So there's reports that have to be filed that go into the state. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background, but um, I'll make sure that on our next meeting that I will have more of a um, layout of what each of our, our employees does so that you guys can see a little bit more about what they do and maybe next time you see them in the community, you can pat them on the back. Excellent. Great, great Good. reply. Great response. Thank you, Linda. Gary, is there anything else? Nope. Thank you guys for all your hard work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I really appreciate your comments. We nice do. We do. Firsthand. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on to a Mr. Doug Moore. Oops, I clicked the wrong button there. Gary, ignore that. Mr. Doug, uh, there you go. Clear to launch. Live. Huh? You're live. Uh, first yep. of all, what a great presentation, Chris. Uh, Thanks, really, Doug. Really appreciate uh, the information. I think it was well presented. Uh, I learned a lot of new things that uh, I wasn't aware of. Um, the uh, the rate increase uh, the, has to take place. Uh, one of the questions I have, is there any way that we can 
look at it as a temporary rate increase or make a portion of it a temporary increase where when a developer, we finally get a developer in that's willing to take some of the burden uh, that that portion gets reduced. So yeah, let me answer that. Um, as I kind of alluded to before, we're gonna make sure that the, the, the current developer and even World International is, is, is brought, um, whether it be through court hearings or what, brought to a place of we're, we're gonna have to go to court over a lot of these issues. When and if we ever collect money, that money will come back in when things are paid off and everything, the balance will go towards rebates, number one. Um, I'd like to see that happen. Number two, understand that on a water rate study, we have to do water rate studies to go up on money to, to charge more, but we can always lower money. So whether it be a developer coming in here and building more houses, with more houses, the rate goes down, obviously. And again, we're a nonprofit, we're not here to make a profit. Um, because we're so far in a hole, it may take us a while to be able to reduce rates because we're gonna wanna build back up our capacity for infrastructure repairs, putting money into a reserve, et cetera. But at some given point, if, if, if we have a developer developing and paying a subsidy, um, um, building houses, what have you, yes, um, I, I don't think anybody on this board would ever say, let's not do a price decrease. I think everybody here would be, <laughs> we live here. <laughs> we, Absolutely. we would want to do a decrease as quickly as possible. Um, now, the, the board could always change um, with a developer um, and through election processes. And that's where the community needs to stay involved and engaged and, and vote. Um, remember, you know, land value or what have you. Um, if your land value is 100,000, you got 100,000 votes. And depending on how you use those votes and vote on different people and put different money on different people, then the board could, um, you know, continue to always be in favor of the community and what's best for the community. So that's going to fall on the community in, 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 in years ahead as they vote and put people in and take people out of, out of the board power. Yeah, you. Thank, thanks, Matt. Uh, one, one thing or one bright spot that I didn't see pointed out is that uh, in great years when we have 100% allocation or even 90% allocation, we have excess water above the banking. And my understanding is we can sell that water and, uh, and collect, it, uh, collect income uh, for the water district. So that would uh, subsidize some of the costs that we're incurring. So David, uh, wanna... I guess I'm asking everyone to pray for water, yeah. pray for a lot of rain. Pray for uh, rain. Because that will help us. Seriously, absolutely. And I didn't see that pointed out. And uh, for um, Sachs Silver Investor, uh, I, I'm looking at a letter in front of me sent out by uh, Keith Bowen, who's the fire division chief for the West Stanislaus County Fire Protection District. And it's addressed to Angels Crossing saying pay up on the rent uh, where the fire, uh, the guys from the fire department are living um, because that's an obligation they have and they haven't been paying the rent on it. So she's looking for some documentation as to things that aren't being paid. I'd be willing to provide her with that documentation. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, <laughs> fire personnel need to be somewhere. <laughs> they need to live in a house somewhere and uh, the, pay the payments aren't being made. So, yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, next, we have Carmen again. And that's, uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute Carmen. There I'm you go, sorry. Carmen. You're good. I don't want to be a pain in the neck for you guys. You're not. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we love you, Carmen. Yeah, it's Thank all good. Um, Linda. Linda. Uh, I remember Linda. Um, I will suggest you if you can check also talking about the role of the um, of Jerry in the West Tehiwara District. If you can check, because 
Western Hewara District is also responsible to oversight all the environmental protective areas within the phase one. Okay, so just for a note and do some research. And wait, wait, are we talking about, wait, Carmen, are you talking about all of the, um, the area for like wildlife and all that? Yes, wetlands, no, no, wildlife, no, wetlands, the maintenance of the wetlands. They have to oversight they check that they, they, the wetlands are clean. If they're not clean, they need to clean it. The Western Higuara District. That's what part of the budget of the Western Higuara District. There is a line item that they charge some amount of money to West, to, I'm sorry, to the HOA to do that job. That's what that means. If you see the budget of the Western Higuara District, there is one line item. So that money. Um, is being collected for, from Western Hewara District in order to perform all the cleaning and oversight of over the wetlands and the phase one. So it's part of the, the, the job description of Jerry and he has done that before. So that's, this is something for Linda. Yeah, right. the job right. description, if she can take yeah, it. Yeah, I'm making, I'm making notes. I'm definitely making notes, Carmen. And, okay. And, okay. If, and if for some reason I can't get um, um, all of the information that I need, uh, um, if it's, if you, with your permission, I'll reach out to you. Yeah. Uh, you can talk with David first. Okay. And yeah. Yes. And another, just my last comment is for all the board members, is there a possibility, a certain type of mediation with angel crossing, um, to work out all these issues instead of go to a litigation, that would be the last option, I think, because it will hurt community, it will take time, lose a lot of money, because this is very expensive, okay? So I don't know if really, they can sit again, this is a new board, it's a new members. I really remember um, Matt, when Guillermo, he was the president of the Western Hewitt District, uh, I remember you said, okay, let me be the president, because the community, they want to have an approach, a transparent approach with Angel Crossing and, and someone representing the community, no developer as War International, to work out with them all the issues. That was the reason why Guillermo, he was not, or he stepped out as a president and you became a president. So in that order of ideas, is there any way that you guys, all the board members, can sit with the developer, open the communication, and kind of start all over again? And I don't know, we're all, we are all together on this. Developer, community. So let's try it again. And if it doesn't work, if you don't listen to them, if they don't listen to you, instead of a battle, instead of Let's see we, uh, to who we are going to sue, to who this, and it's an, um, a breach of an agreement. I understand legally, yes, it's a breach of an agreement. Whoever did it, that's fine. Yes, I take it. But I understand, you know, I'm foreign. I came from another country, but I learned from this country that this is the country of the opportunities. And there is an opportunity here to see, negotiate, and dialogue, okay? And in these times that we're living, I think there's a lot of possibilities to see and talk. If it's not possible, okay, but at least have that opportunity. And I don't know if it's possible. I just- I No, just... well, no, you make a great point. And by rescinding the assignment and assumptions agreement that we as a board did, we're gonna be bringing World back in and Angels Crossing back in, and that'll be a great time to discuss everything. That's right. It's that'll be a great discuss time. whatever you want. Yep. Discuss it with whoever, okay? Sure. So by getting all the players back um, uh, at the table, it'll be a great thing. We'll, we'll yeah. see what we can do. That, that, that is correct. That is correct. Instead of um, just uh, battling or see with who um, or to who I'm going to sue, to who I'm going to No, No more anger in this community. We need to move forward. We need to see if there is the last uh, resource. Okay, go ahead. It's what it is. That's the reality. It's what it is. But now we have a new board members, that is the whole community. That's what they wanted. There you are, they have that. 
They have community. They have members of community in the board. Now open a new community. That's my humble opinion. Awesome. Now, are you representing Angels Crossing now? <laughs> no, I'm not working with anybody right now. Oh, okay. Employment <laughs> in my house. Okay. Awesome. My kids. Carmen, I any Carmen. other resident in this community. Carmen, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. I think uh, you know, obviously mediation and a, a talking with the, the 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 key players in all of this is very is of course important. Sure. Um, I don't know to what extent that has been attempted at this point. I don't um, know, but I can tell you that you know I've never been contacted by anyone. Uh, yeah, I've but been a board member now for a what, couple months. Okay, why you don't try to do it as a board member? There's some new board members here, right? So go ahead and try to connect with them. All the board members, again, we have a new faces. Well, we can't all get together, you know? Huh? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll work on it, Carmen. We'll work. <laughs> we will, we will. This is not, you know, that's, that is uh, an avenue of strategy. Absolutely, right? Um, yeah, that's, not gonna, that's not going to, that's not going to, that's, there's no way that that's going to save us financially in the next, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not part of uh, a, a, of this. I'm just a, any if someone's here, not willing to pay their trash. <laughs> I know. I know. If someone's yeah. not willing to pay their trash bill or support the local fire department so they can live in a home. How is some sort of negotiation, extended negotiation? Listen, you need to separate, you need to separate. You need to separate the business of West Tehiwara District for another developer. Uh, uh, things that they, they have to be responsible. Now we are West Tehiwara District uh, business. If they don't pay their trash of uh, their own office, if they don't pay the um, whatever they wanted, that's that means they have no money, correct? Tehiwara District. But All of this points the, towards them having no money. So but what what no, I understand. But what happened? What happened? What happened if, you're, if you will have the money to pay this pocket or this, um, these expenses and not the other ones? You don't know. Yeah, not even a dime has been paid, Carmen. Not even a dime. Not a one thin dime. What kind of negotiation? But we are just talking about West Tehiwara District. This is a business for West Tehiwara District. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. Sit and negotiate with them. Again, these are new board members, new faces. That's what the whole community wants. Right. Right? So Carmen, I'm going to make it official. I'm going to make it official. I'm going to ask David to send a letter to Angels Crossing and ask them to talk with the board. Yeah. And 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 <laughs> and tell us their their idea. Tell us when they're going to pay money. When are they? How much do they want to pay? I'm gonna. I'm no, gonna no, no, ask no, no, David. I'm sorry. David, I'm let's sorry. do it. I don't let's think. Do I don't think. Wait, we have no, to pay. I don't think David. that's the way to do it. Right? No, I don't think that's the way to do it. We need to take a, all right, we need all right, to guys. We've had enough. Hey, We've had hey, enough. Hey. We get it. We got hang on, it. hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just we get reel it, it in. Wait, wait. Let's reel it in. We've already been on this topic yeah, we've, with we Carmen. It. Unfortunately, we've got people with their hand up as well. Yeah. So I totally agree. We will, we will, you know, mediation is something that should be pursued, and we all agree with that. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. are But uh, and I appreciate that suggestion. By the way, Carmen, you know yeah. I respect you. Um, Thank you so much. And and uh, and I appreciate that you're willing to to you know come online and talk about it, and that and that's great. So let's let's okay. let's let that happen. Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully they'll come talk to us. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you, um, Mr. Steve Stockmall. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Very good, sir. You're good to go. All right. Thank you, Chris. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. sir. All right, first of all, um, thank you guys all very much for putting the time in. Uh, obviously, you all put in a, a large amount of time on this. It's appreciated. Um, it helps clear up a lot of things. And here's my question. So I've been following all of the conversation. Um, and so this is kind of where I'm going with this. We potentially raise the rates to get to a point where we are eliminating the subsidy and we as residents are paying what's required every month to operate moving forward. 
correct? Uh, less correct. capital expenditures, keep that less, in mind. Less capital expenditures, I, I understand that. Yep. The next question is this, and Matt, you made the comment when or if financial arrangements are made with either World or Angels Crossing to pay the, let's just say debt in arrears, and that includes all of it, whatever that might be. Sure. You know, cruise, water, trash, TID, a 911 equipment, all of it, okay? Well, some of that stuff is H or some of that stuff has nothing to do with the water district. But You're right, I get, your I, point. I, I, I get it. I get your point. Yeah, so if we're, if we're as a community, we are paying enough to move forward and mm -hmm. be more attractive to another developer that may come along, mm -hmm. okay? What happens with all of this and and if you're you're and if you're not able to get financial repayment from either of those two entities, what happens to those debts in arrears? So once again, there's a lot of things that the board is looking at in how to get rid of the debt. Let's just talk for the debt for a second. So debt would be Kern, um, debt would be the sewer that's Correct. been paid, yeah. um, maybe a little bit here or there um, of other things, but the debt. There are some ideas that we're tossing around. We've been discussing it in executive session because it has to do with le legality sure. issues. We can't bring that out here into the open. But there are things that we're talking about. There's things that Julie is working on by being our um, real estate and bond um, officer kind of person. There are things that we're looking at doing to where we might be able to bring that debt down. By bringing the debt down or completely eliminating it is the goal. And there's different avenues and different legal techniques that we can go about to do that. And that is something the board is looking at and we're processing on how to go about it. And, and, and it's, it's not as simple as you think. Uh, there, <laughs> there's a lot of this, that, and the other thing involved. So what, if we were to, let's just do some hypotheticals. If we were to eliminate all of Kern's debt, if there was a possibility of doing that, if we were able to get out of all of the debt with the, um, by paying it off of the, um, of the sewer, we raise our rates and now we're being able to move forward and make our payments going forward. We still have the big capital issue. If, if we were able to, you know, be kind of like a Tom Brady, laugh out loud, you know, and, and, that, and that's just, my boy. That's yeah, my boy. and just be complete badass and and get it through the uprights and and do something, we could save the district. There are options, but they are. I mean, we unfortunately don't have Tom Brady. I, I would I would think that, and and where I'm where I'm going with this is, I would think that I would hope that a lot of the residents out here would be willing to take on an additional $100 a month, let, ju just based on the numbers we're talking about, sure. take 25, 30, whatever, whatever it would be. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope that the majority of residents out here would be willing to do that for a period of time sure. to keep the lights on, if you will, in this case, to keep the water flowing, okay? Mm -hmm. As long as there is definite plans in the background to reduce, eliminate, whatever, whatever term you want to use, what's in the arrears, and that we're not going to be stuck with paying that arrears further on down the road. No, that's that's that that is completely reasonable and understandable. Okay. And the, the plan A and the plan B that hasn't completely fleshed itself out. Right. Both of those plans take care of the debt. Gotcha. One way or the other, the debt in, in both of our plans as we proceed on which way to go. And, you know, plan A may be the, the, the catalyst, and then we may have to go into a plan B eventually due to capital um, improvement issues. So, but either way, absolutely, um, 
we are looking at how do we solve the debt issue. And the debt issue has to be resolved no matter what plan A or B is, um, 100%. And yes, there are options that we are looking at to do that. I just can't. Well, and, and, the reason I, and the reason I bring that up, and I, I know I brought this up in some meetings in the past, you know, anyone that may be out there going, oh my God, my water bill is going to effectively double. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sell my home. I'm out of here. This place sucks. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Hey, where are you going to go? You're going to go to Tracy? <laughs> gonna buy a house in Tracy Hills for $800,000? Right. You're going to be serviced by PG&E with an $800 a month cooling bill during the yeah. holidays? And that's real. That is true. That, that is reality. Not, that's why I'm bringing it up. That's why I'm bringing it up. So 100 bucks a month really when it comes right down to it the considering other alternatives to move out and move somewhere else we got it good here no and 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 this is the this is the thing that is is where i'm saying the community has to start looking at this a little bit differently and it's um, do you, do you enjoy living up on the mountain? Do you live, you enjoy living with the deer and, and, and the coyotes and the raccoons and, and do you, the, the bobcats that drive us crazy and eat our gardens? Do we like living in that community? Um, sometimes you have to pay to live in a community like that. And we have a lot going for us up here. And I understand that when you hear water bill, you know, a $200 base rate, geez, that sounds ridiculous. But when you think about it, you're pumping water through three pumping stations up a thousand feet to get it treated and then got down to all of our homes. There, there's a price for that. That, that, you know, whereas when you're in the city, you're on flat ground and, you know, it's, it's a very different animal. So when you look at what we're paying, as you said, in perspective of what homes go for in Tracy, what you would have to pay for a mortgage, um, what you would pay with PG&E versus TID. Um, yeah, you, you look at all of that and, you know, it, it, you take that extra 100, maybe 130, 20, something like that dollars that's going to be added and you divide that and it's, you know, you're missing a Starbucks a day, you know, or something like that. It's when you really put things in perspective, do I think it's not right? No, I don't think it's right. When people say I'm frustrated, heck yeah, I'm frustrated. You know, you have a developer that says they're going to do something and they don't do it. It's frustrating. And so, yeah, there's frustration there, but we have to get away from, from, having that umbilical cord to a developer so we can live our lives and we can enjoy living our lives. And if a developer comes and builds houses, great. If they don't, okay too, because we're self-sustained. And, and I think- Well, we're, we're self-sustained, Matt, but here's also the issue, okay? And, and, and we also need to get to a point where our home values are increasing as they should be. So I think, it's, I think it's baby steps. I think- you know, although, you know, many of us would rather bang our heads against the wall at this point than to entertain the thought of trying to mediate. Um, and, and I can say um, a couple of, a couple of uh, attempts at communication that I have made myself have gone on deaf ears now for approximately 48 to 72 hours. So I can imagine what it's been from all of you that may have tried to do it, but we, we've got to we've got to apply the tourniquet. We've got to stop the bleeding. Correct. Uh, get that choo choo chug chug chugging up the hill, and yeah. then we got to get somebody in here that has is going to actually act upon all the wonderful things that we've been told. And I want to see all of our property values go through the roof. And that will happen as long as water is sustained. Right. And, and I agree. It's heard. Yep. I agree. Spot on, Steve. Spot on. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I've spoken. Hey, thank you, Steve. On, on to the next it. person. Great yeah. Thank comment. you, man. Great questions. Um, well, it looks like uh, that was the last hand raised. 
how do you guys feel? Tired? <laughs> hey, we have what, 37 people that hung, yeah. hung around. The diehards. It has been impressive. We start, we, we peaked at 39 and we only dropped to 37. Wow. Matt? Yes. Um, this is Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi there. Um, just, I, I was going to maybe jump in and respond to some of these questions as far as um, adding what our obligation is under the bond agreement for these mm -hmm. parcels. I don't know if you want me to get into that right now. As long as you um, don't release anything that we've been discussing in executive session, go for it. Yeah, no, I, I just think that there, I can probably just keep it simple. Um, just so that everybody understands when this uh, transfer occurred between world and angels crossing. Uh, everybody knows under that assignment and assumption, as Chris showed the um, Melarus bonds weren't paid. And that was an agreement that they made to pay, um, which is actually not water district money. I, although we do have that refinanced bond fund that, uh, that we're using, but we do have an agreement that we have an obligation to foreclose on parcels that exceed a certain percentage of delinquencies within the district. Mm -hmm. And that would account for 100% of the parcels that Angels Crossing own. So just so everybody knows, those are things that we're looking at um, relative to the district's obligation. So um, there's multiple parcels in the district that were intended for homes. Um, right now, it's up to over 2,300 homes that could be built here that would add enough customers to the district um, that were intended under the specific plan. And I guess the, when they went and redid the specific plan. Um, so I just think that, you know, we can't just sit here and wait for the owners to pay. We, we don't have to do that. Just I just want people to know that is. We don't have to sit here and wait because we are obligated to move these parcels, just like if the home next door to you were in foreclosure. That's technically what's going on. They're not taking care of the home. They're not paying their bills. We really don't have to sit and look here forever um, at that home. Um, so that's what the district's obligation is to do, is to make sure we can foreclose and move these properties um, and hopefully get somebody that, that comes to the project and actually does do development and pay the obligations that they agreed to. So, thank you, Julie. And it's beyond the time that that uh, you know the the time we don't have to wait. I just wanted to let people know that. Appreciated. Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else from anybody before we? Um, motion to adjourn is there anyone else that would like to say anything i'd like to point out that this has been a four hour and 15 minute meeting for us board members <clears throat> yeah but you know what this is and i'm going to say this even when covid ends even when covid ends um and we can get back to having meetings at, at our little tiny office i still think we're going to zoom we will have the office available for people that want to come in person because that's what the law instructs and we'll have a board member there or a couple board members there, but I wanna continue with Zoom because A, I think we have a lot more people involved, a lot more people engaged, and it's easier for them. And I believe in community involvement. So I, I'm liking this Zoom thing. So even though this was four hours, it was four hours of good information and four hours of good conversation. I was really just giving us all a pat on the back, but yeah, I agree. Uh, I like the Zoom. It's an accessible way to get to these meetings for people. And uh, uh, absolutely, if we can have in person as well, we will. Absolutely. Yeah, legally, yeah, we'll have to. And that's, yeah. and that's, well, and let's face it, our little office will not hold 39 people. So <laughs> this. That's why this, nobody ever showed up. Yeah. So this, this forum allows us to um, reach more people and more people to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Agree. Good stuff. And I just, I just want to mention, I, I didn't get a chance to, unfortunately, because I was muted at the moment. Um, but Chris, that presentation was amazing. I mean, Thanks, I really buddy. highly appreciate all the time and effort you put into that. It's obvious that you poured yourself into it. 
tons of good information, really, really educational and super helpful. So thank you so much. I really no, it's my yeah. it's my pleasure. And I want to I want to drive one more point home that Matt said earlier, and that is that this presentation is factual information. There is no hearsay involved here. This has been reviewed by our attorney. This has been reviewed by Matt, who is integral in everything that's happening right now at the district. And why not? Let's let's thank Matt. I want to thank Matt, frankly, because he has done so much work at this point. It's unbelievable. Way more than me, way more than any of us, I imagine. Um, and uh, I just, yeah. I appreciate that, you know, we have somebody at the helm who's super passionate about this and is trying to do the right thing always, you know. I, I feel like um, we need to clear the air a little bit on, on, on people having misgivings about this district and this board because at this point right now, I feel very good about our board and I feel very good about the directions we're heading. Yep. So thank you. Yeah. It's a team effort yeah. and everybody is is doing awesome. Um, and I do, I wanna thank everybody from Julie to um, Linda to Mark. Mark, uh, you were only, you gave a tidbit of information in this meeting, but the amount of work this guy has been doing, the amount of time he has put in looking over the financials, um, Man, Mark, you're you're awesome, and I want to thank you personally for all of that work. And and I know, you know, we've talked about stuff, and I know how much work you're doing. And the community will absolutely be thankful um, to you for all of this when it gets brought out um, in its fullness. So thank you for that. Hundred percent agree. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, with all of that said, oh, go ahead, Julie. Nope. I think that was Linda. Oh, Linda. No, nope. nope, it was I'm I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Matt. So let's motion to adjourn. Our next uh, regular meeting will be Wednesday, March 10th. And that's going to be a jam-packed month of meetings, I can guarantee you. So motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye.